Ugh. Let's get this going. Let's get this going. going on freeway just waiting for something to kick in here and i can take off oh bucks here fuck dar take away his wrench take away his wrench we're not gonna mess we're not gonna mess with this monkey today take away his wrench <laughs> uh, so we got a bit of a sterling's nipples hurt i would take no response i just hung up the phone from sterling by the way I take no responsibility whatsoever for Sterling's hurt nipples. Maybe hurt feelings, but no hurt nipples. You're on you're on your own for the you're on your own for the for the nipples, dude. So we got a bit of a different day going on here today. We've got a bit of a different day. I'm actually just pulling out of a rest area. Um, usually I got two, uh, two rounds, right? Oh, usually I got two rounds to do with the ingots, but my, uh, second round, my second load was canceled. Uh, the train didn't make the switch. So there's no ingots. So I'm, uh, lucky. Same spot on I-81 with that. I should have warned you guys. But so I don't know because um, I sent a message in this morning to uh, to the office, the other office, and I told them I was available. You know, as of this morning, I was available to do other work if they need some. You know, they they need me to run some load a load into Montreal or they need me to run up to Ottawa or. Um, but they have not got back to me yet, so I don't know. We're uh, we're only like an hour and 20 minutes up to the yard. And then if there's no work, then you know what? We'll turn the camera around. Oops, let's not do this. We'll turn the camera back around and we'll sit and do the chit chat from the yard. Um, if they got more work, then we'll just keep the live stream going and you guys can drive into Montreal with me and look at all the non-English signs. So we'll have to wait, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. How's everybody? How's everybody? Dave Edwards, good to see you. Kitty Craze is here, of course. Sterling is here, of course. Do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, be so kind and uh, hit the like button. I'd appreciate it. Actually, hold on. I can fix. Uh, I can actually fix the phone. It's jiggling, but that's because I've got it. Uh, it's charging right now, but it's fully charged. So I, I can pull the cord out, and it'll sit properly in the in the mount. And uh, we can get rid of that jiggling. So just give me one second here. There we go. Much better. Much better. The last thing you guys need is any more brain damage from a jiggling phone. You get enough of it listening to me for fucking five or six or seven hours. I violated that button like it was a redheaded stepchild. a boy. That's what I like to hear. Tell me all the dirty stories that you guys got with between you and the like button. Love it. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Couldn't uh, I couldn't stick uh, I couldn't stick around long in Ernie. I had some other stuff going on. I did catch part of his show this morning. I guess we're pretty much when he started. Uh, right up and right up until about an hour ago, but uh, I was kind of quiet in there, and I was just 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 listening and watching, and you know, he's got rain. I do not. Although we are supposed to get some over the next day or so, which really sucks. I'm kind of enjoying this uh, mud-free mud-free uh, zone we got going on here, so. Not too bad. 
Oh. I was I am so unprepared. I am so unprepared. I don't have my drink ready. Fuck. I gotta make sure my, my boot yeah, my boots are on the right feet, so we're good there. Yeah, I was just lurking. That's all I was doing, just kind of lurking in the background. So I said good morning to everybody. You know, everybody does the good morning, good morning, good morning. So I did all the good mornings and then kind of sat around in the back and just just watched. I'm good for that. Sterling paid the bar, paid the like button for favors. What can your like button do for you today? Add up, boy. I cost that. I cost that like button. I was almost gonna say go ahead and rape it, but no, we don't do that. We don't do that. That's a last minute ditch effort when you do that. So here's I got some bad news for you though. I got some I do have some bad news for you though. Because I'm not doing two turns today, right? I'm not doing two turns today. I'm only done the one and I'm already halfway through it. Um, there will be no driving home naked on the second turn. So I'll have to wait until uh, another another date. And no, I didn't just cancel one of my loads just so I had to didn't have to drive naked. Believe me, I'm not giving up that much money just so I don't have to drive naked. Man, if you paid me that much money, I'd drive around naked all the time. So um, that's why I'm not uh, that's why I'm not going to be able to drive naked for you guys today. Sorry. I know there's a big sigh of just disappointment gone. Oh, come. Personal thing, 48, what time is it uh, for you? Right now, it is 8, uh, 8.20 in the morning, 8.20 a.m. I'm, uh, I'm in upstate New York. Um, I'm on I-81. I'm about, uh, I don't know, 40 miles, 35 miles up to the Canadian border. Uh, and then we're going we're gonna to cross the border, the live stream. While we're live, we'll cross the border and... Uh, Get up to the yard and then figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my day. And you guys are uh, going to come along for the trip. If you want, I can't hold you hostage. I can't I can't hold you here against your will. If I, if I could, believe me, I'd hold all 200 of you here. And you wouldn't be going nowhere. But morning, flatbed. How the hell are you, brother? How the hell are you? Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. Tolg is here. Ladies and gentlemen, the, ambas the ambassador has arrived. Please bow your head accordingly. You're on a beautiful run today. Vote to load in Shelby, North Carolina. Going to Jackson, Tennessee. That's, uh, that's some nice driving you got to do. That's some nice scenery you're going to be going through there. Awesome. Nice run. Hopefully it pays you, Buck. I'll take, I'll take an ugly run that pays well over a beautiful one that I don't make anything on. So. Yeah, it'll take you through the Smoky Mountains, exactly. I'd love to take Dar through there. I really would. Greetings from Turkmenistan. It's a lie. It's only 20. Okay, well, now it's 20 after. No, it's 21 after. It's 21 after. I think, I think, I think, uh, I think Tolg is just doing it to keep track of my how far behind I get in the comments. Right, so now he knows where we started, so we, we, he knows how far behind the comments I am at any given time. I try to, I try my best to, to, because I, I don't touch the phone, obviously, uh, I don't touch the device. I just let it, I let the comments just scroll up naturally by themselves, and I try to pick off key words because if, if it's too long, obviously I can't read it, right? So. Um, but I think I think he's just making sure that I don't get too far behind. Thinking about going back to pull a van. Dude, I did it. I did it. I did I did 16 or 17 years pulling flats, doing uh, step deck and oversize and and oh heavy haul, and 16 years it takes a toll on your body, man. I don't know how old you are, flatbed, but it takes a toll on you, so I had to take. A, I took a couple of years off, right? I went back to vans, and uh, I did that for I think two, two and a half years until I started back and doing this gig here, where I'm back on flatbed, and I'm feeling it, right? I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm, and I'm not old by any means. I'm 54 years old, right? So I'm by no means am I like an old man or a decrepit old fart, 
Um, but yeah, I'm feeling it. Well, you know, when I, when I do these loads, you know, you, you uh, load it and unload it twice in one day. That's a lot of strapping and pulling and yanking. And, you know, I feel it. My back feels it. My shoulders feel it. Well, there you go, Flatbed. If you've already got the bad back, I'm in, I'm in the exact same boat, dude. I but I took two years off, and it was probably the smartest thing I could have done, right? Smartest thing I could have done is, is take at least two years. Uh, I probably could should have taken five, but then this fell into this this contract fell into my lap, and I wasn't about to let it go. So um, it's one of those. Okay, I'll take some short term pain for some long term gain. You know what I mean? Pulling this, uh, pulling this end dump is growing on me. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Give me, a, give me a flatbed, a step deck. Give me a goo, an RGN. You know, uh, a van, a reefer. But no, nah, I'm not pulling end dumps. I'm not pulling end dumps. No thanks. You guys can keep that. Working, uh, working in the lumber yard finished you. Yeah. Mushroom tip your host 10 bo 10 bucks from the Sterling wheel. This is, this is actually Sterling. You don't realize it, but you're actually, every time you do that, you piss Dar off because I, I take your $10 and then go eat, eat dinner that night. So I don't eat the tr food that's in my truck. And then she gets pissed off because I don't eat the food that's in my truck. So it's all, Dar, it's all Sterling's fault, right? Sterling threw 10 bucks at us yesterday, and that paid for my, my cheeseburgers yesterday. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see where we end up today. Might, might, might be another cheeseburger night. <laughs> that's what we're going to call it, the cheeseburger night. Do appreciate it, brother. Uh, had a great talk with you today, Sterling. I love talking with you, man. I really do. It's just like two brothers just sitting there talking, you know, that haven't seen each other in a long time. It's like, it's like my, my, like my younger brother, right? I don't talk to him, you know, every day and I don't talk to him, you know, every week or whatever. And I don't see him very often because he lives out in Alberta, but you know what? It's when we talk, it's just like, you know, picking up an old pair of shoes, you're putting them on the comfort level and everything's there and we laugh and you joke and you, you fuck around and, you know, it was, it was, uh, I, I got off, I get off the phone with you and I, I felt, I felt good. I felt good. Some people, you hang up the phone, you want to blow your brains out or slit your wrists. Sterling, ah, eh, you know what? I felt good. I support whoever I sleep with. Let's not get carried away. Let's not get, you're a good looking dude, but let's not get carried away. Let's, uh, let's keep that, you know. Uh -uh. <laughs> like Tolga, <laughs> Tolga, you're going to get yourself killed. Dara's going to take your wrench away if you keep that talk up. <laughs> no, don't buy food, buy another cigar. Oh, great. That's just great. <laughs> uh, good morning, Joanna. How are you? The second time I've said good morning to you today. Hopefully you're well. You know what? Thank you. I, I will be safe and I will be blessed today. Now that, now that you find people are watching over me, <laughs> I'll be blessed. Uh, $4.99. You guys got to remember, that's, that's, that's $4.99 American. That's like $35 Canadian. You guys are, to you, that's, that's you know, small money. To me, that's, that's like, that's half a mortgage payment, man. <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think, well, $10 is worth, uh, for Canadian, ten dollars is like thirteen dollars and twenty cents Canadian. So five five bucks is like six bucks to me. 
Canadian. So appreciate that. Appreciate that. Oh my God. Oh my God. All I, all I saw was you got a pretty mouth. I was going to back up the comments to see why he said that. I don't think I want to. I don't want to. I think I'll leave that one right alone. Not touching that. I don't, I don't want to know why Tolga or, so, or a hooligan's telling somebody they got a pretty mouth. It's like when you, know, when you first go into prison, right? And you, you go through, you go through uh, intake and then you go through, you know, the, the inspection and then they hand you your clothes and they're walking you down to your cell. And like you see it in the movies all the time. And in some cases, that is the case. That's actually what happens. And as you're walking by, you know, some some big guy in a cell that's, you know, he's bigger than the cell. He looks down at you and he goes, you got a pretty hole. It's like, pardon me, you have a pretty hole. It's like, OK, I, I'd like to be at the other end of the fucking at the other end of the prison for, for this one. Thank you. American dollars cost more to make than they're worth. Oh, I believe that. I know that Canadian money does. Right? Our money's our money's not even paper. Right? Our bills aren't even paper. It's it's uh it's almost like a nylon plastic synthetic. You can't rip it. They're 100% waterproof. Um they're fireproof or they're fire re resistant. And uh even then we don't even have dollar bills or $2 bills. We got coins. So it costs more to pro. Uh, they cost more to make them, but they they last forever. Well, I appreciate that. Do want to thank you? Thank you. You know, we're just we're just, uh, all we're doing is just out here hanging out with a bunch of good people, shooting the shit, having a good time talking. Maybe do a little talk about trucking now and then. Most of most of what we see in this chat and everything that goes on in this chat, it's a, it's just about everyday life. And you know what? I I love it. I love that, and I support it in my channel. You know, we talk about we can be talking about anything, including Sterling's nipples. Thank God we can't put visuals up, though, eh? Could you imagine if Sterling all of a sudden, all of a sudden, a picture like in the chat, a picture of Sterling's nipples popped up? Yee, yee. I don't know. I think I might actually lose Dar if that happened. We were talking yesterday of what it would take for for Dar to leave me. Uh, I don't know. Dar's, Dar's gotten a, a fascination with men's nipples, so I'm telling you, that, that might actually do it. Well, hopefully your son uh, watching is, uh, hopefully, first of all, he's of age, and if he isn't, then hopefully mom's under mom has explained to him that, you know, in our industry, we're going to say the odd bad word. And uh, we're probably going to say a couple of things that are inappropriate here and there. But, you know. Hey, it happens. Shit happens. And it happens to all of us. So. The hell are you guys talking about toilet paper? The chat's already running away from me here. Already running away from me. We've been into this for 19 minutes and 40 seconds, and the chat's already taken off on me. We've we've gone from having a pretty hole to, to, to uh, toilet paper talk. You have appropriate nipples. Well, that's fine. That's fine. If that's where if that's where the chat's gonna go, hey, we can sit there and talk about uh, nipples all day long. I, I got no problem, right? I'm a boob man. I'm a boob man. Everybody's got nipples. If you've got them, let's see them. He has cerebral palsy and has and has heard it all and seen it all. Okay, good stuff. I I don't want to be responsible for him turning to you one day and going, "Holy fuck, ma! Did you see the ass on that woman?" You know, I you know I don't want to be. And you're gonna turn to him and go, "Where the hell did you hit?" Well, wheel burner said it. So. As long as, as Dwana, as long as we're good with that, let the boy watch. Hold on. Give me a sec. I gotta light my stick here.
There we go. How's the sound? We okay? I got the window open a crack here, and we got a, a nice wind blowing through. I just don't want you guys to be. I don't want you guys to be listening to that if you don't have to. Oh, Dara's on the phone with Big Mike. Big Mike, he's the guy that does all the music for our channel. He's done uh, he's done three songs for us, three uh, three really good songs for our channel. Um, and he's uh, he's been a longtime friend of mine. I've known him for years and years. Actually, I had no choice. I had to meet him because he married my cousin. The poor bastard was crazy enough to marry into my family. Man, I wonder if he's having second thoughts about that. <laughs> he's, I know he's not listening. So if he's talking to Dar, I know he's not listening. So I don't have to worry about it. Yet I try my best not to piss him off. He's 6'5", 360 pounds. You know, he's got enough strength in his right hand to crush my head like a grape if he really gets hold, if he ever gets hold of me. I can run I can run faster scared than he can mad though. He is he watches regularly, so he's seen it all. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. You know me, Duana. I just want to make sure, you know, I don't want him, you know, I don't want, I don't want to put you in a position where you're answering an off, uh, an uncomfortable question that he's asking you because of something I said. That's all. That's all. But mind you, you know what? Most kids these days from the age of, by the time, by the time they're seven, they know all the important swear words. By the time they're 12, they can say them in two to three different languages. So. You know, I know, I know for a fact that, you know, when my kid, my kids are all now adults, right? They're all 20 plus. Um, but, you know, when they started swearing, what am I going to say? Right. They heard it from me. Well, they might have heard the odd word from me, but they came home from school and they knew it before I before I knew that they knew it. So. Which which uh, which one do you like there, uh, hooligan? Because I've got the the. The sort of like the country version song, which is really good. That was the very first one. And then he did the blues opening that I used to open the lives with. I'll probably open in with it on, on Saturday night. And then he did another one. Um, and then actually uh, another good friend of mine, uh, Scott, he did another wheel burner song. We don't use it very often. I don't know why I should use it more, um, but it's more of a, a jazzy type sound to it. He's 16 going on 17. Oh, okay. He's not going to hear anything out of my mouth that he hasn't heard already. Nah, we're good. We're good. I, I'll, I, I do my best. That's a lie. I, I'm lying. You, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm lying. I was going to say, I do my best to try to keep this as PG as possible, but you know what? I'll be honest with you. If I did that, I'd be faking it, right? I'd be faking it. Cause that's not who I am. I, and I'm not saying that I'm a, I'm a big old fucking drunken sailor out here and I walk around cursing and swearing and that's who I am. Cause that's not it either. But you know, if I don't talk normally the way I normally talk, then what's going to happen? One day, Dewana, you and me are going to meet and you're going to go, oh, my God, like, who's this guy? I, that's not what I see on YouTube. So actually, Sterling and I were kind of talking about that earlier. It's like what what you see or what what is projected here and what you see is, is I do my very best to be as natural and, and normal and who I am. I try to give you this is who I am. Right. Without giving you all of me, 100% of me, obviously there's some, uh, because a lot of people that do YouTube, you, you do have to hold back some, right? There's certain aspects of my personal life that doesn't need to be on YouTube because it's my, and that's, you know, from my wife and my family. But, you know, if I was to meet you in person, you know, what the person you meet in person is what you see on YouTube, so...
You cur you curse like a shipyard nun. Nah, that's bad. I've known a few. I've known a few shipyard nuns, let me tell you. If you try to control your cursing, it just gets worse. You know what, uh, Hooligan, I, I agree with that. Because there's the odd time where I've my brain has stopped me and my mouth was already running and my main brain stopped me from saying a certain word. And I just end up screwing it up, right? Or it sounds stupid or it sounds like because I'm trying to be politically correct it, it, with the terminology of saying something. So I, uh, I, do my, I, I do my best now not to do that, believe it or not. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. In public or like if I'm standing around the yard with the boys, the F words fly a lot more than they do when I'm on YouTube. Right. And certain other flavorful words tend to come out of my mouth, you know, but that's when you're standing around the shop or you're standing around the yard. And it's, you know, that's there's a time and a place for that. Right. I, I don't use certain terminologies and words when I'm at home, right, around my daughters. Although to hear them talk, you'd think that I did. Um, I think I, I don't think there's any one of my daughters that can that that I can outswear, right? My my kids my kids can they can cuss with the best of them. I I don't know whether to be proud or or disgusted. Probably a little bit of both. And then if you if we're sitting around the fire at night and you throw a little alcohol into into the mix, my God, Dar and I have Dar and I have looked at each other and went, did our, did our child just fucking say that? <laughs> literally, literally. Hmm. Well, yeah, hooligan exactly right. There's a time and a place for everything. You hit your thumb with a hammer. You're not going to hear me go, oh, darn, that hurts. The first word, the first word comes out of my mouth is going to be mother. And the, the follow to that is, you know, uh, ucker, you know, so. It's a, I put combination swear words together like nobody ever heard before. So, yeah, something like that. Absolutely. <laughs> he started laughing as he told his brother to get out of the damn way so he could see the TV. Was he watching me? <laughs> Hopefully he wasn't watching me on the big screen. Although these driving videos, I wonder what they look like up on a big screen. Like I've never, I've never, to be honest with you, I've never watched one on, on the, on the big screen. If Dar and I are at home and say Sterling goes live and we're at home, we'll throw it up on the big screen. And that's, you know, it, it's really cool to watch like that. Um, but these driving, these driving videos, I'm, I'm curious to know how these things would actually, uh, how these things would actually look up on the, uh, up on the big screen. I wonder if the quality is any good. Oh, I got bumped by the Simpsons. Damn, man. Damn. I got bumped by the Simpsons. That's okay. I'll step. I step. I'll step aside for the Simpsons. That's all good. Anybody? Any? Anybody here ever been like a conspiracy theorist? Right? Because I was watching. The, I'm not. Believe me, I'm not. But I was watching this thing the other day, and they went through like all of the different seasons of the Simpsons where there would be predictions of what was going to happen in the future. And it's a little uncanny about some of the stuff that they predicted way back then about what was going to happen in the future because it, it actually happened. I don't need to be in high definition. No, me neither. Me neither. That's why you always watch porn on a phone, right? You don't ever watch it on an 80-inch high-def TV, right? You're, you're going to see things you didn't want to see. So... David has a, I got a foil hat. You know what? Funny. So do I. So do I. <laughs> My produced videos are all high definition. Mm, you might want to think about that. You might want to think about that. 
This guy finds it interesting. Uh huh. I don't know how to put anything off of my phone on the TV, on the big TV. Um, most of the newer TVs, I think with the TVs in the last four or five years, uh, are smart TVs. So like all of the TVs in my house, they all wirelessly jump onto the internet. And then, you know, like when I, the, the, t the newest TV, the one in my room there, you know, I, I turned it on and all of the apps, there were already apps preloaded on it. YouTube was on it. Amazon was on it. Netflix was already on it. I didn't have to do anything. It was already all there. And you just you know, use your controller and you go to YouTube and you hit it and then punch in whatever you want. I don't have to. Like Sterling is already preloaded on my thing. So I just Sterling wheel and boop, there he is on, on an 80-inch TV. Well, Dewana, I am computer illiterate too. I really am. But if it's preloaded like that, I can fumble my way through it. But I, I do need the kids or I need Dar, right, to, uh, to to get it hooked onto the Wi-Fi and all that kind of crap, right? Otherwise, otherwise I'm screwed, right? If the Wi-Fi in the house crashes, I'm the first one panicking, running around. What do I do? What do you know? Okay, Dad, go over to the modem, unplug it, count to 20, plug it back in, and wait, you know? But me, I'm I'm thinking, you know, the world's ending, right? The world's, the world's over. What are we going to do? Aliens love a trailer park. So do tornadoes. Just by chance. Just by coincidence. Yeah, well, it, it all depends. Yeah, exactly, uh, Tolga. It also all depends on how old your phone is or how old your I think I think they've had the screen share options on the phones for year for a few years now as well. Buck, I, I agree. Everything is everything everywhere is connected in one way or the other. It really is. It really is. If if somebody wants to find you, it can be done. Right? It can be done. With you know, Turning your phone off nowadays isn't isn't an option anymore, right? People used to turn their phone off and then they couldn't track you or they couldn't. It doesn't matter whether your phone's off, whether it's on, whether it's wrapped up in a fucking chips, Frito-Lay chips bag, tin foil. It doesn't matter. They, if they want to find you, they can find you. If the TV is such a smart TV, it should know it should know what I'm thinking. It's not a man, Dewana. It's not a man. Let's not get carried away. It's still a TV, right? It's not a man. You know, men are supposed to be mind readers and know what you women don't want at all times without being told, right? So the TV is still a TV. It's not a man. Now, if you've got a man and he's got a built-in TV in him, that's it. You you you've you've hit the you've hit the lottery there. Baby, that's the lottery right there. Do you know what a blonde and a tornado have in common? <laughs> it has something to do with they both suck and one takes off your head. One they both take your house or something like that. All right, let's hear it. Why do, why do, what do a blonde and a tornado have in common? They twist. <laughs> they twist when they're coming, <laughs> and they take the tea, the house and the car when they're leaving. Uh, so true, so true. That's why. That's why I don't have a car. <laughs> and if she wants to take the house, knock yourself out. You pay for it. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Because of wind power generation, tornadoes don't hit houses, don't hit trailer parks anymore. Man, if you got your beanie screwed on too tight, dude, I told you, you can't wear that thing all the time. I know it looks cool, and you got that little propeller on top, but I, I think you, you Sterling, you got to take it off once in a while, right? You, you can't, you can't walk around for the rest of your life with that same beanie on. You got to take it off, brother. 
I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, Tolga. Why? Why does Santa have such a huge sack? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna regret asking this. I really am. I know, but okay. Why does Santa have such a huge sack? Farmer told his wife, your ass is as big as a 12-row corn picker. <laughs> because he only comes once a year. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that one's good. Poor bastard. Poor bastard. Hey, guys, guess what? I finally found out what Tolga looks like. I finally found out. Yes, yesterday, I got a picture of him. I finally got a picture of Tolga, so I know what he looks like. I promise you, I promise you, it's not, it's it, like the Tolga that you know in the chat and that you guys all love, when you see the picture, you're going to go, really? Really? Yeah, trust me. Trust me. Even, even Dar did a, oh, really? A double take on that one, so. Yeah. The Tolgameister. Little Turkish delight over there, eh? Do you know why scuba divers fall backwards off the boat? <laughs> no. <laughs> I learned that joke two days ago. We're still typing everything because I'm special. <laughs> Your special special needs, maybe. All de all depends on how you define special, Tolga. You're not still you're you're still not you're not still licking the inside of the window on the school bus, are you? <laughs> uh, fuck. Okay, we're off to this kind of day. We're we're off to this kind of day because if they if they fell forward, they'd still be in the boat. Oh come on, T Bone, you got to do better than that. You you got to do better than that. Why can't they fall forward if they hang their feet off the edge of the boat and just fall forward? Thanks for the compliment, but I accept myself as average to feel normal. Ah, dude. One day, one day we're going to go live. We'll put the link up and, and Tolga will pop in. And every, everybody's going to, all the women will lose their panties and all the guys will lose their mind. When it comes to doggy style, I'm right behind you. I hope you're not talking to me and you're just talking in general. <laughs> uh, dude, Tolga, are you secretly twins with Mel Gibson or something? No, he, he's not Mel Gibson, but let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm not going to spoil it. It's going to have to be Tolga to spoil it for you, but I'm telling you. You guys are going to look at this and go, really now? All right. Yeah. Divers do it deeper. I'll agree with that. Brother from another mother. Who knows? Aren't we all? Aren't we all? All 14 of us in the chat. Aren't we all? How do you go from 300 people to 14 in, in fucking five minutes? That is awesome. Let's at least try to get 14 likes out of the deal. Yeah, we need a fee. I, I agree. I agree. But I'm not going to do it. I would love to. I would love to. And it took all of, it took all of my, 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 my power like yesterday not to take that picture and just throw it up in the community and go, Tolga, and I didn't do it. It's got to be. Gotta be that does it one day one day we're gonna get a face reveal i know it tolga knows he's got to come out he's got to come out into the light eventually and let the world see you and, uh, you and mcgregor maybe you're, you're getting closer 
you're getting closer. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. If it wasn't for the fact that he told us the other day that he weighs 140 or 150 pounds, right? So you can you can take the body of a you you know you figure you got a 140 or 150 pound guy, right? But the picture I got of him is basically from the chest up, right? Like from his mid chest up in his face. So it's like it's like a headshot. So I I didn't see the rest of his body. He could be shaped like a pear for all I know, but like from the waist down, but. Um, but from the picture I got, it's like, yeah, not bad. Not bad. You're right. It is. We, we started doing that. And I also took a strike on yesterday's video. Um, apparently somebody didn't like the fact that I was smoking a cigar and YouTube gave me a strike and they said that I was promoting smoking because I had a cigar. I was smoking a cigar. You believe that? Meanwhile, you can go over, uh, there's got to be at least five different cigar channels that I follow, right? And these guys are smoking cigars like there's no, like it's going out of style. But I took a strike on YouTube for yesterday's live because I guess I was I had a cigar and I was smoking it. Now that's not gonna that Dar's appealing it and Dar's usually pretty good and she's very persuasive with YouTube when I, whenever I take strikes for this or that or whatever and 99% of the time she gets her way. I think even YouTube just doesn't even fuck with her. But uh, this one here they they reviewed it. I guess they had a complaint, so they it went. Uh, they reviewed it, and then she uh, contested it. So then they manually reviewed it, and still said I was uh, no not following uh, the company policies or their guidelines or whatever. And then she took the the next step. You can keep going, and so she took that step. So we're waiting to see what the hell happened there. So I'm cu I'm curious to know, you know. And why anybody would, like, I don't promote smoking, right? I don't not promote it. Like, if you smoke, fine. If you don't smoke, that's fine, too. Um, if you're underage, I don't suggest you do it. You know, I don't promote it if you're an underage person. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's freaking weird. It really is. You know what we got to do, hooligan? is we got to get Tolga, we got to get Tolga to, to, to get himself like a bearskin loincloth and get him to model that. So not only do we get to see him, but we get to see him in a, like a bearskin loincloth with great big open ass chaps on the, on the, on the back. I know, I know. I don't think I'll, I don't think a single live goes by that at some point during the live, um, you know, I'm not smoking a cigar. So I find it very odd. And, and and you know what? All it takes is like even if it was just one of the trolls, you know, some troll that doesn't know the channel, doesn't know me, just scrolled by and said, "Look at this old fucking, look at this old fuck sitting here smoking a cigar." Well, I don't like smoking, and he shouldn't be smoking because, you know, we get the odd person that goes, oh, don't smoke, and you should stop, and blah, 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 blah. And uh, they probably complained about it, you know. I doubt any of the regulars. I doubt any of the regulars would, would complain. Who knows? Who knows? You just never know. Although I, I got to say, you know, YouTube's getting a little bit ridiculous with their terms and conditions and guidelines. And I mean, man, if, if it gets any more woke, then, you know, we're just going to shut this shit down and go to Rumble. Really? Honestly, I know Rumble's a pain in the ass and, and everything like that. And it's, it's a little difficult to, to, to get set up and get it running and everything. But, you know, I, I'm, I do this because I like to sit back and relax and enjoy and have fun with you guys right? That's why we do this. 
I do this because I have as much fun as, as you guys do. If, if Hopefully you're having fun. But you know what I'm saying? I'm not here. I'm not here so YouTube can strike me down because I'm smoking a cigar. Well, Tolga, you're right. But think about it in this concept. There's people out there doing make with YouTube channels that are doing a whole lot more than sitting there doing a chat, smoking a cigar, right? There's a lot, and they're getting away with it. But they're gonna strike me for smoking a stogie. Maybe they didn't like the brand. I don't know. Who knows? Okay, we're gonna hit a couple lags here as we go around this corner because we're we're just coming up on the border, so. We might lose. Uh, all I got to do is uh, turn YouTube off for a rumble when I'm ready to do it. So, um, but, you know, I kind of like, I kind of like what we got going on here. This isn't a bad, this isn't a bad deal. And like, you know, all of you guys crowd that my channel is, 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 is attracting except for ban banana bus. Except for Banana Bus. I don't know about him. If we go to Rumble, nobody tell Banana Bus we're going to Rumble. I'm just kidding, Banana Bus. Just messing with you. Just messing with you. I like I like this community. I like the crowd. I like I like people that, that are coming to my channel. So I, I don't know if I want to go over a Rumble and have to start from scratch all over again. Um, but I will if I have to. If, if, if YouTube keeps up with this, you know, stupid terms and conditions and you know, anybody literally, anybody literally, like any one of you can right now go and, and make a complaint because I use the word fuck. And I will take a strike for it and I will have to fight to have that removed just for a simple thing like that. That's that's how bad it is right now. Morning, Fast Eddie. How the hell are you, brother? CDR, good to see you. Thanks for taking a moment out and popping over. I appreciate that, man. We're just uh, we're just rolling up to the border here. Just rolling up to the border. I just looked over at the incoming trucks coming into the U.S. from the Canadian side over there, and I thought for a minute I saw I saw Oser driving James's truck that. Uh, that T680 with the gold and black. Same truck, identical everything, same color patterns. Woo! Looks like Customs is backed up. We could be uh, we could be sitting here a few minutes, guys. Which one of you guys, which one of you fuckers called Duck Customs here and ratted me out? Personal thing 46, um, I really hope you're saying something nice, but unfortunately, man, I don't know what you're saying. I don't, I don't, I don't read whatever, uh, whatever language that is. I'm, I think it looked Arabic. All good. Just trying to get out of the Northeast here. What's wrong with the North? Well, aside from the price of freight in the Northeast and trying to get some, that's bad enough. Northeast, well, I don't know if you consider where I am the Northeast. I don't really consider it the Northeast. I, I don't figure, I don't think the Northeast is until you get up into like Connecticut and Maine and all that kind of shit up there. That's the Northeast. Blame Tolga. Yeah, I'll blame Tolga for, for all my uh, all my YouTube strikes. It's It's Tolga's fault. He, lay, he lays down the law and people don't like it, so they go report the channel. You know, he deletes you. I put Arabic on my keyboard and started spamming random letters. Well, you can you can do that if you want, man. Um, I'd appreciate it if you didn't because I can't read it anyway. And uh, it's a fast way to get yourself uh, silenced. Crazy, tra tra crazy traffic cross Bronx. Okay, so you're, is that where you're uh, you're at right now? You're coming through there. 
at uh, at nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm sure you're enjoying that. I'm sure you're just loving that. Man, I make I make my visits uh, I, through New York when I when I have to go into the into the when I have to cross the GW and I have to go in there. Um, I time my visits uh, and my my deliveries and everything right down to the second. Um, you know, I'm I'm in there by noon and I'm out by one o'clock, two o'clock at the latest. Are you from Quebec like me? Personal 46, personal thing? No, I'm from Ontario. Um, although I live uh, I live pretty close. To, I'm, I'm within two hours of, of Quebec. I uh, I live uh, just in uh, south uh, southeastern Ontario. Out by, uh, if you go to Kingston and then go way up north, not way up north, but if you just go north out of Kingston, I live up in the country up there. But I'm originally born, I was born in Toronto. I was hatched. I was hatched in Toronto. The doctor looked at me when I was born and said, oh my God. What a treasure. My father said, yeah, let's go bury it. Whereabouts in Quebec are you from, personal thing? I'd love to be able to read all the languages and alphabets. Maybe it's going to be possible with Elon Musk's skull chips. Worth a try, right? You're not putting nothing like that in me. You're not putting nothing like that in me. When the day comes where they're putting those chips in our bodies, hopefully, hopefully I'm already dead. But if I'm not, it's it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I am not walking up to a cashier and scanning my arm so that you so you can I can I can pay for my food. That's why Dar loves me because I was hatched. <laughs> <laughs> like a chicken, right? Dar loves chicken, so because I was hatched like a chicken, that's why Dar loves me. Is the traffic mental in New York? In New York City, yeah. It's especially at specific times. Like New York City between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. Uh, actually, 6 a.m. and like 9, 30, 10 o'clock a.m., depending on where you're going. If you're trying to get through all the boroughs, right, Harlem, Queens, Bronx, um, you know, uh, to get out onto the island, Manhattan, all that kind of shit. It, it's 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 freaking mayhem. It really is. It's it's a pain in the ass. The state of New York to drive around that is no different than probably driving around out in the country where you are in in Ireland, there, uh, Jim. But New York City itself is uh, is a pain in the ass, and it's it's not, it's very poorly planned um, for trucks. It's very heavily truck routed and it's very poorly planned and the streets were not designed for trucks. Even the truck routes, even the truck routes, uh, routes were not are not very well designed because a lot of those streets were built back in the 30s and 40s and they weren't designed for trucks. And the city was built up so quickly and so big that they couldn't widen the streets because they'd have to knock buildings down to do it. So and then even when they did start putting truck routes in, that was back in the in the 50s and 60s when we were only pulling 40 foot and 48 footers, right? We didn't have 53s. So now if you're pulling a 53 foot trailer around New York City, you better make sure your fucking tandems are as far forward as they can go. Otherwise, you're not going around some of these turns. I don't know if you know, but Val Valer. I don't know where Val Valer is. I know where Valdor is, Valcor is. Uh, Val Belair, I I'm not sure of. Quebec is a big, I think it's the land-wise, it's the biggest province. Chaos around the boroughs is crazy. Oh, it is, it is, dude. I I, I ran it used to for years. I ran LTL through there, right? So I'd have two two drops in Harlem, run over to Queens, a couple drops there, over out to over to the Bronx, um, and then my my last drop was usually out on the island. And so I had, I had to get all, because you can't go in and sleep there, right? So you got to go in in the morning, get all your shit done. I never had a reload coming back out. I usually had to go over to Jersey and get my reload. 
and then uh, and then get the hell out. So you got to go in there and try to dodge as much of the traffic as you can, um, and then get all your drops done, and then get the hell out before two thirty. I found the same in London. Well, you know what? I've never, I've never, uh, I've never obviously been to London, um, but I've seen, I've seen people, you know, people that drive. Like I've seen live videos and shit of people driving around London. Yeah, it's chaotic, and those, those, those idiots over there drive on the wrong side of the road. They really do. Oh, wait a minute. They drive on that side of the road in Ireland too, don't they? Well, the the English are the idiots. The Irish are, well. You guys drive on the other side of the road. The English are the, you, the, the English do it because they're just dumb and don't know any better. The Irish do it probably because they're just drunk. And the, the fact that the Irish can keep the car on the road, never mind into the lane, is just a miracle. So I think in Ireland, they should have driving on both sides of the road. <laughs> have I been to the UK? No, I have not been to the UK. I've never been to Europe. I've never been anywhere in, in Europe. Um, Darlene really wants to go. And I think she's planning a trip early, either late this year or early next year. And she's going to go, she's going to go to Iceland. And then she would like to do like Portugal, Spain, France. She wants to go see all that. And I don't want to go. So I just told her, I said, grab one of your girlfriends and go. So she, she did. So she's planning to, to, to take one of her girlfriends and they're going to go see Europe and, and Greenland and all that kind of stuff. Me, on the other hand, I'm one of those guys and uh, I like, you know, Canada, U.S. I've, believe it or not, um, I've never spent any amount of time in Mexico, um, but the Caribbean, down in Caribbean, like, you know, Cuba, Dominican, you know, Trinidad, like all that, love that. I go, I, I go there. Holy Moses, my boss just came in and told me the company is buying us lunch. Good Lord, where is this? I haven't crossed this bridge yet. I can, I can be there in about a day. Hold lunch for me. I don't know where you, I don't know where you are, Dewana, but I can be there. Trust me, this, this thing will go fast if I wanted to. I'll take a free lunch. I'm a truck driver. I will take a free lunch. <laughs> yeah, okay, you agree, do you, Jim? Yeah. I might go to Japan one day. You know what? I don't think I'd, I'd mind. I don't think I'd mind going to Japan. Um, I don't know. There's not a whole lot over there that I really want to see. And people are going to look at me and say, "Are you effing crazy?" But no, um, that's just the way I am. I'm not. I'm not a big historical sightseeing type. I know. I. I don't. I know that my my oldest daughter, uh, she was in Taiwan, and then she was in Singapore. She spent uh, so, spent a couple of months in both of those places, and uh, she's blonde haired, blue eyed, and she's almost six feet tall. And she was walking around, and she's talking to me. She's going, "Dad, I'm the tallest person in the country," and I stand out like a sore thumb, right? Big, big, tall, blonde haired, blue eyed woman. Uh, the uh, the Oriental men were absolutely infatuated with her. You recommend Cannes or Nice if they're going to the EU? If I go there, you know what? If I if I actually was to get on a plane and go over there, I want to go to Dubai. I think that's the only place that's caught my attention that I'd like to go and, and see and walk around or drive around and hang out in. The problem with me going to Dubai is I might not come home. I might just stay there. Franklin, Tennessee. Hey, from where I am right now, you're 12 hours. 12 hours, baby. You hold lunch. I'll be there. And the funny thing is, a lot of family heritage, David, a lot of my family is uh, is Europe, European. Like my grandmother, my grandmother uh, on my dad's side is is from England. Um, she married my grand. My grandfather went over during World War II, and hooked up with her. And while he was off, 
he, he hooked up with her for a couple of nights, you know what I mean? And then we went off to war, and when he came back, he had a son. So he ended up bringing her and my dad over from England at the end of the war and brought them back to Canada. But the, a lot of my family heritage is uh, uh, I, uh, Iceland. Um, we did the, we did the, the thing, the uh, Ancestry.ca. So um, I, Iceland, uh, Scottish, a little bit of Irish, some German. Um, a little bit of the Europe, but most I was mostly from from biggest part was like um, like I, uh, Iceland, Ireland, Scotland, and that was the biggest portion of of my family heritage. Love to go to Europe and down under. Are you saying you would love to go, or you've already been and you'd love going there? Australia is somewhere I would like to go. I would have no problem going to to Australia. And now I have a reason because now both my oldest daughters uh, have decided to, that's where they've decided to settle. And they're going to, re, they re, both reside in Melbourne in Australia. So if there's ever a good reason for me to go, now I have one, right? Australia would be cool. There's a lot of stuff in Australia I would like to see. What I want to do is I want to, I want to drive one of those, those, those trains. You know, the truck, the one of those those Kenworths they got down there that's got like 15 trailers on it. That I really want to do. Where are the undies at? Ryan, we I can't I can't do it. You heard you missed the beginning. My second load was canceled today. I've only got the one. So this is this is still this is my first load I'm returning from, not my second one. So it's like it'll have to wait. It'll have to wait till tomorrow. I'll have two loads tomorrow, and in the the uh, in uh, the homeward bound trip tomorrow, I will uh, I will be uh, driving. Road trains. Thanks, Fast Eddie. Fuck, I, I had a I had a mouth glitch there for a minute. I couldn't uh, couldn't think of it. Road trains. Thank you. Yeah, everybody get your passports out. Ryan, you shut the fuck up. We crossed the border yesterday. Thank God they can't they can't hear the chat. So as as I hang up my headset, right? I hang up my headset and uh I'm talking to the I'm looking at the screen and there's Ryan going well, good thing we've got the 15 Mexicans, the five pounds of cocaine. And it's like, oh, my God, thank God they can't read this. I'd be going to jail. I'd be going to jail. Oh, I just got to update my logbook here. Customs. You have to go on duty when you cross the border. Like when you cross across uh, the border here, you have to actually go on duty to do it. Okay, so give me 10 seconds here. I just got to uh, I just got to hang up the headset here. Hold on. Be right back. Three and a half hours. Just down to New York, uh, Oswego. Two ingots, aluminum ingots. No. All right. Thanks, man. Have a good day. All right. No thanks to Ryan. They still let me in. They let me. They let me back into my own country. How nice of them, eh? 
Oh, excuse me. All right, boys. Give me 10 seconds here. We're just going to switch cell phone towers, and I'll be right back with you. Here we go. There we go. We found beautiful day we got so far. You notice the weather got better when we came into Canada. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Tiptoe through the tulips. <laughs> you, are you already into the whiskey there, uh, Tara Jewel? You already into the whiskey already this morning? It's 925 where I am, and I think you're three hours behind me, so it's only uh, 625 in the morning. You already sipping at the jug, bud? Now, nah, Buck, we didn't leave anybody in charge this time. Every time I leave one of you guys in charge, the channel crashes. Oh, this, see, this would be a good day. This would, be, this would be a really good day to be able to show you guys off the side of these, this bridge. Show you the islands, show you the Thousand Islands. It is spectacular. We're not touching the phone though. That's a big no-no. Whiskey makes me frisky, so no, not yet. Well, it, I was gonna say put a little in your coffee, but that'll make you wide awake and frisky, so. I never ever did that. I never put whiskey in anything. I drank it straight. I never put it with mix. I never put it with coffee or nothing. Never drank it straight. I was such a pig. I didn't even require a glass. There you go. You're now successfully all honorary Canadians. Tara Jewel, if I picked you up in Syracuse, which would have been about 30 miles south of where we started, where I started this live, this is how we'd get to my place. We'd come to the we come to the highway here. We're about to get on the highway. And instead of going towards Montreal, we go towards Toronto, where we're sitting right now. What is it with the motorhomes pulling? Remember yesterday? Remember yesterday? We came uh, we came onto the highway. We, we did the exact same thing. And there was a guy from Quebec in a motorhome pulling a car in front of us then yesterday as well. Well, small miracles happen. He actually used his signal. <laughs> okay, banana bus. Yeah. You're far enough away now, son. You can break it all out. Break it all out. Whatever you got, break it out. I suggest you keep the hookers and shit. Uh, keep them tied up in the back for a while till you get parked. You don't want them running around your truck while you're trying to drive. It, 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 it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but the rest of it, break it out. Oh, the OPP stand on guard for thee. They're busy this morning already. Look at that. Okay, French fry, come on. That thing's got that thing's got another pedal. I need you to push it. 
we can't be doing 40 mile an hour on a fucking 65 mile an hour road. All right. He's probably sitting there eating a great big box of poutine, smoking a cigarette. No, actually, it looks like a snowbird. All the snow, all the Canadian snowbirds are coming back from Florida and Arizona now. Like they're coming back to Canada. Looks like a little snowbird. Tyke just went live too. Damn. That's some hard competition over there. Do Quebecians count as Canucks? Well, in the polls, yes. But if you ask another Canadian, no. If you ask them, no. They don't they don't want to Kara Jewel, they want our federal money, but they want they want to give nothing for it. Right. The province wants to separate and they want to go their own way and do their own thing, but they can't because they can't support themselves. Right. The province can't support itself. So they require federal funds, which they're more than happy to take. Um, but on the other hand, they uh, don't want to give anything for it. So they don't they don't want to be considered Canadians. They don't want to speak English. It's against the law in Quebec to have a Canadian uh, an English sign up. If you're a store owner and you have an, a sign and it's in English, you get fined. Um, it, everything has to be in French. That's how that's how absolutely crazed they are. But in Ontario or the rest of Canada, they expect us to speak English and French to them. But if you go there, there's no expectation of them speaking English to you. I've said it before, Tara Jewel. There's nothing. There's nothing in Quebec that's worth a damn except for poutine and strippers. After that, man, the 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 quality of everything drops right off. And lumber, I guess they ship a lot of lumber. But other than that, there, there's really no use for the province of Quebec. If if they separated, what they wanted to do is they wanted to separate. Because that would divide the country, like that would that would cut off the maritime provinces, like New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and, and Prince Edward Island, and they they automatically went. Well, that means that every truck carrying freight has to come through Quebec, and we're going to tax it and tariff it, and you know, blah 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 blah. And, and we all went, no, because you know what, asshole, I'll go down into New York, cross over into Maine, and I'll come up that way, and I'll pay, I'll give the Americans my money before I'll give it to you. And when they realized that it wasn't going to work. They backpedaled on that one. I think this is the guy they just had pulled over giving him a speeding ticket. I'm doing 65 right now. And he's passing me again. All right, dude. One ticket, one ticket on a, on a, on a Wednesday ain't enough. Oh, surprise, eh? Quebec, Quebec plates. He does. They don't wait. They just come over. With, oh, I've got eight inches. What the hell? I'm good. I come over now. Hey, my name is Jean Claude. I'm Hawk Jacques Larocque. I drive a truck. The highway belong to me. Yeah, whatever, Froggy. You're right, Jim. It is. It is. But it's not. But the funny thing is. If you're in France and you've got that arrogance, I guess they're entitled to it, right? They've had it for as long as time can be thought of for, for France. But you come to Quebec, they haven't earned that arrogance. They don't deserve to be walking around with their noses held that high looking down at the rest of us, you know? France is a freestanding country that can support itself. Quebec can't support itself. Oh, yeah. No, I agree, Tolga. I agree. 
Woo, birdie. We almost took out a crow. Almost took out a crow. Ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor and hit the like button. It's those three little dots up in the top corner there. Hit that, the screen pops up. You see the like button, give it a little push. Give it a little stroke, give it a tickle. I don't care what you do with it, just hit it once. I do appreciate it. I really do. It does help the channel. I think Tolga has that that co that comment there. Tap the three dots. I think he's got that on copy and paste. He doesn't even have to type it anymore. He just he just copy and paste, bam, hits it. <laughs> it's Yeah, Jim, the, the French over here are, are very entitled. They, they truly are. And I say that with, I have relatives that live in Quebec, right? I got French relatives. Luckily, luckily, um, I adore them, right? I adore them. Like my one cousin, uh, Luanne, she lives, uh, well, she lives just outside of Montreal, but she lives in Montreal, let's say. And I grew up with her, obviously. So she was my age. I grew up with her in, in Ontario. And then she moved out to Quebec because her mom and her family are from my aunt's from Quebec and all that kind of shit. So that's why she moved to Quebec. But um, she's part Ontarian, I guess you want to call it. Um, but still, even though she lives in Quebec, I adore the hell out of her and I love her more than anything in the world. So I give her a free pass. Same with her kids, right? Her kids get a free pass. So. But the rest of the rest of the province, I, I got no use for it, dude. I'll be honest with you. When I go to Quebec, I don't buy a single thing there. Okay, I don't buy fuel in Quebec. I make sure my truck is. I make my, sure my truck has enough fuel when I leave Ontario that I can go through Quebec into New Brunswick without having to buy fuel. I don't stop and buy coffees. I don't. Uh, I don't buy any food. I don't nothing. I refuse to give the province of Quebec a penny of my money. They get enough of my money through through taxes through federal money that obviously paid by our taxes so i just don't do it can't stand quebec and if you're in new brunswick you probably you probably hate the, the french more than i do although there's still there's a lot of french speaking people that live in new brunswick especially just when you pat when you cross over the first 60 miles into new brunswick from quebec there's a lot of french accents and a lot of french there i don't hold that against them though If Dara and I, if let's say, for example, Dara and I were going to go out to uh, take a trip out, out east, let's say 2-4. Let's say 2-4 says, hey, what are you doing? Why don't you and Dara come out for four or five days, whatever, hang out. We'll go see the coast. We'll go watch the whales and we'll go eat some crab and blah, blah, blah. We'd go, sure. I would come all the way and cross the border here and I'd come up through Maine into Nova, uh, into, uh, Nova Scotia. I would not go through Quebec to drive my car through Quebec. I wouldn't do it. That's how much I, I dislike going there. The only the only reason in my truck I go to, into Quebec is because I'm being paid. I'm being paid to go into Montreal and deliver or going into Quebec City or uh, wherever, Boucherville or whatever I'm going. I'm being paid. Otherwise, I would not freely just go into Montreal or into Quebec. Oh my God, Ryan, you actually did it too. Ryan just sent me. Brian, Ryan just sent me a picture. I have a feeling, I'm 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 gonna look at it. And my eyeballs are gonna be burning. I can't look at it while I'm while I'm doing this. But he just emailed it to me. I don't know, Ryan, if I want to look at that. Big Eagle, hello, dude. How are you? Uh, me at work. I see you online. Well, dude, I am. Uh, believe it or not, I'm at work too. I'm glad we're both we're both working at the same time. Don't work too hard today. Today's hump day. You work hard Monday, Tuesday, and you work hard well, well, Thursday, Friday. You don't. Nobody works hard on Wednesdays. Does uh, Canada have a huge national deficit like the U.S.? Believe it or not, 
Tara Jewel, we uh, we didn't we didn't uh, up until a few years ago uh, when the liberal the liberal which for you would be like the Democrats uh, until the liberal government took over and then they spent they started spending. So I don't think our deficit is in the trillions like yours, um, but our deficit is now you know we we are into the billions for our deficit. When you think about this is a country that had very little debt national debt. We have provinces that are actually profitable, that owe, that owe nothing, that owe no money, that are run no deficit whatsoever. Um, but we are now, right? Uh, Trudeau has is, is basically uh, printed off so much cash and then given it away to other countries, not even used it for our own country, that it has put us billions of dollars into a, into a deficit. Um, but remember, though, this, Terry Jewell, okay, you guys have whatever trillions of dollars worth of debt, but there's 345 million of you, right? So your debt load in percentage as per population is probably the same as ours. We only have 37 million people in Canada. So for our, let's say our debt load is 200 million or 200, or 200 billion dollars. I don't know what it is. I'm just pulling that number out of my ass. But our $200 billion, if you break it down to population, $200 billion with a population of 37% is what, whatever percentage that is, right? Now, if you divide, do the same math with the Americans, with your debt load being in the trillions, but your population is 10 times what mine is, it's probably about the same percentage, right? It's probably the same percentage. Mind you, we don't we don't have a massive like i think i think the the us is biggest uh expenditure is on your military now canada just doesn't have that like we've got what three submarines that have never gone out to sea and when the one time that did it caught fire and had to be towed back in um we have a couple of coast guard cutters um and a bunch of rowboats a canoe and one kayak you know that our military is, is is very very small, so our our military spending is nothing. Whereas the American, you guys spend in a day on your military what our military costs us for a year. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the U.S. needs that military. It, 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 you know they are the epitome of you know walking through the woods, you know, as you're walking, walk quietly and carry a big stick. Well, the USA is the big stick. I didn't say big dick, because I know you Americans don't have big dicks, but I know you carry a big stick. <laughs> yeah. I saw it, Ryan. Here in Pakistan at 6.34 p.m. Uh, time out. But I see bro online. That's why I stay left for watching. Because in my home, no Wi-Fi. Only have SIM internet. Oh, wow. See, to me, that's odd, right? I guess, you know, it, it's... You know the differences in the countries and the differences of of uh, of how people live. You know, I think it's odd if you hear about somebody. Oh, I don't have any internet. I don't, we don't have home internet, right? The houses here, our homes here, pretty much rely on internet, right? You can't really do anything without home internet now in Canada, and I I say in the U.S. as well. I didn't chicken out, Ryan. I didn't chicken out. There's nothing I could do about it, right? I, the second load was canceled, and I was already on my way back from the, from doing the first one. So, and I'm not about to strip down to my underwear and then walk into the office and say, hey, do you got any more work I can do, right? Because I'm kind of hoping that I don't want to just do one turn today, so I'm kind of hoping when I get back to the yard I'm going to go inside and see the people in the office there of, of the other office of the other division and say, hey, like I've got I've got pretty much half a day's worth of logbook here. 
You know, do you need something? Do you, need, you need me to run into Montreal? You want me to run up to Ottawa? If you got something I can go pick up and bring back to the yard, um, just because I really don't want to shut it down and sit around for the next 20 hours. So I didn't chicken out. It's just that I'm not walking into that office. And might I say that there's they're all women except for one guy. And I'm not walking in there in my underwear. That ain't going, that ain't going to happen. The supply to our military is embarrassing. Dude, let me tell you, I agree. Two, four, it is. It is. Now, I'll be honest with you. Um, our Navy is pitiful. Our Air Force is twice as pitiful. Um, our army, our armed forces are like our, our ground troops. Um, our, the Canadian army, um, they are, they are decent. And our special forces, our J2F guys, um, they are at the top of the, they are at the top of the food chain. Like they rival the SEALs, they rival the SAS, they rival the SBS. Those guys, uh, and I, I know, I happen to know, I know two of them. And let me tell you, like, uh, they do. That is that is one division of the Canadian military where no cost, or no nothing is no cost is spared, right? Those guys, those guys go when those when the when the J2F guys go into go overseas and they go off to war, they are fighting with the best of the best and they they hold their own. Um, and the proof of that is every year when they do the war the winter war games, um, who wins? So I think the last three years in a row, who won? Canada. And then the, on the, uh, the the summer war games, I think they won the last three out of five, the J2F guys. So our, our special forces are supreme. Everything else is pretty crappy. Pretty crappy. Like I said, if you're if you need a if you need the Canadian Navy to go to battle, yeah, they're coming out they're coming out there in a rowboat and a kayak with a slingshot. It goes up and down, Big Eagle. It goes up and down, and it's the algorithm, right? It's the algorithm because we we do the it's YouTube's algorithm. We we do these live driving videos with the short format. So when you got when I have like 250 people in the chat, there's not really 250 people. There's 250 people that all at the same time were swiping with the shorts, and they stopped for a second, and the number skyrockets. Oh my God! And then you go, you know. Two minutes later, you're down to 100, and then five minutes later, you're down to, what are we at, 60? And then it'll bounce between 60 down to 20, and then it'll go back up to 200. It, it just bounces all over the place because of the algorithm, right? There's probably, if I had to guess, there's probably 40, 30, 30 people in here right now that are here constantly. The rest of the people are just swiping through, right? They're just short, swiping through. What's going on there, doggy? I like I like how he calls me old man. We're gonna ask our dog how old he is. Hmm. I'm old man. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, Johnny. We are good at uh, supplying bodies uh, to military. That, that's uh, no equipment. Well, I don't. I. I I don't think the Canadian enrollment system uh, or enrollment officers are too highly uh, overworked. There's nobody running out of high school these days going to join the Canadian Army or Canadian military, right? It just doesn't happen. So many people using YouTube as a money stream. No, you're right. There are. Uh, and the proof is in the shorts. Go look in the shorts as you're swiping through. And you're 25. Well, I agreed with you on the first part of that, but I call bullshit on the second part. Dude, you got t-shirts that are older than 25. Don't whiz the wizard, asshole. I 
I'd be willing to bet if I looked in the back of your truck, there's a pair of socks under your bed that are older than 25. Nope. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're 25 years old with 35 years trucking experience. I don't know, dog. I ain't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but even I can do that math. Even I can do that math. Right? You had to be at least 19 to get your CDL. And if you've got 35 years trucking, you add 19 years to that, right? You're at least 55, 54, 55 years old. They are still in good. <laughs> they are still in good shape. Old Levi overalls. Yeah. Ah, man. You know what? I haven't worn a pair of overalls in years. Like the, the old Levi's. I don't own a pair. I don't own. A, actually, you know what? I was like last time I put a pair, wore a pair like that. I think I was in my 20s. I should go get a pair. I should actually go get a pair. Believe me, I used to wear them. And with the last name of Brown, what do you think you got called, right? Farmer Brown. So not that it bothers me if you want to call me Farmer Brown. I don't. I get called Santa Claus on here all the time. So who, who the hell who the hell's worried about being called Farmer Brown? I wear overalls during the winter. Well, I wear the I wear the Carhartts overalls but those go over my other jeans right those go over my other jeans i don't wear them with nothing underneath them i used to work at levi's at a levi's store i wish i knew you that's all i wear i wear one brand i've worn the same brand of jeans for probably all my life with the exception of like those those overalls, those Levi's overalls, um, all of the jeans I wear, I wear 501 Levi's, and that's all I've got. If you go into my you go into my closet, or if you come into my truck, I've got five pairs of 501 Levi's in the truck, and I've probably got four or five pairs of 501 Levi's at home. It's the only ones I wear, man. It's the only ones I like. I do like Carhartt. Um, I like them for their durability. Um, although I was a little disappointed because I had uh, the Carhartt, I've got it, I still got it, but I got the Carhartt winter coat and I took it up onto the ice road and it failed. It did fail. I had to, uh, I had to wear extra layers normally that I wouldn't have to wear, say that, that I, w I wore with my other winter, my, my other winter jacket. Um, it's comfortable and it's durable. I'll give you that. But uh Warmth wise, it, it, it didn't meet the it didn't meet the standards up on the ice road. It's still a good winter coat. Like I, that's what I wear for my winter jacket while I'm down here, working down here. But when I was on the ice road, it it popped. Actually, funny enough, up on the up on the ice road, um, probably I'd say about 70% of the guys up there were all wearing uh, skidoo jackets. You know, the 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 really, really sub uh sub freezing skidoo jackets that's what they were all wearing they were all old and beat up but that's what they were all wearing i wear wrangler because they fit me better i can't dude i can't find anything that fits me like levi's i've tried them all tried them all well dog so do i in, in the cold in the winter time like even for example right now i'm wearing a hoodie Okay, when I got up this morning, I put on a long sleeve t-shirt and then I put a, a regular t-shirt on over top of that and then I put my hoodie on, right? And I'm good and it's it's 40 degrees here right now. And I'm good with that, out out in 40 degrees with that, right? Um, and then if I was gonna, if I was going to uh, get even colder, I would put another layer under, uh, under the long sleeve t-shirt. I put one of those Thinsulate, you know, long sleeve shirts. 
and then put the long sleeve and then the t-shirt and then the hoodie and then I'm good for probably close to down to freezing. Anything below freezing, then I'll probably throw a jacket on, a light jacket on. But I, I don't like to wear jackets in the winter. I prefer to wear layers. And I was shown um, many, many, many years ago that um, if you do it properly in four layers, sorry, five layers, not four, five layers, you can go down to like minus 20 with just five layers of clothing on with no jacket. And, and you're okay. And, 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 it, and it works. And I do it. So I, I only put a jacket on if I absolutely have to, right? If it's required or whatever, or if it's raining, say it's a, a wet rain or something like that or something, whatever. Mind you, if it's minus 40, chances are it ain't raining, right? So Dar saw the pick. Dar, is it rated X? Like, could it go up in the community? Or is it is it too graphic and they'll they'll strike it? I just saw Ryan say he's got no problem if you post it. So just curious if it's if it's too rated X then uh, then don't worry about it. But if it's something that we can get away with throwing it up in the community, hell, throw it up. <laughs> Cattle prods. Thanks, Johnny. I appreciate that. Always looking out for me. Looks like Steve got his new shiny bumper. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to park and I'm just going to quickly run inside for a second. Because I can't obviously I can't phone them because my phone is doing what it's doing right now. Right. And uh, I'll just see if they've got any more work. And if they don't, then I'll. Uh, I'll just turn the camera around here and we can continue on with our uh, BS session. Sorry, I kind of like to watch what I'm doing when I'm doing this. Most of the time, it's kind of important. There we go. There we go. Look at that, eh? Guard dog's always watching my back. He's sending Dara cattle prod to get me to do DDP yoga. You don't need to get the, you don't need the cattle prod. I'll do it. We all know he's quick, like a short video. Yeah, this is just going to be a short one. Okay, give me uh, give me a couple of minutes. I just got to. I got to go. I got to go up to those offices up there real quick. Be right back. Okay, here. Look out the window. Which way do you want to look? You want to you want to look into the truck or you want to look outside? There's more to look at out there. All you're going to look at is an empty seat for two or three minutes. You want to look at the office? No, you don't want to do that because if by chance they say something stupid to me, you might see a, one of their bodies come flying out the fucking window and then it, I've got video proof of it, which will incriminate me. Okay, I'll leave the phone right where it is. I'll be right back.
Well, <clears throat> looks like you guys are stuck with me. There is no work. I could have grabbed a load. See those reels that just went by? Those are going out to uh, those are going out to Cedar Rapids. I could have grabbed that load. You guys want to go to Iowa? Think we can get out there and back by tomorrow? <laughs> I can get out there by tomorrow. I can't get out there and back by tomorrow. Oh, I can actually see. I can actually see. So yeah, that's my day. We are actually. Let's go off duty. Oh, totally forgot about that. There we go. Uh, hold on here. There we go. There we go. Are you down, but you're, are you at home, Johnny? Or are you, uh, are you down somewhere else? You're not even home 24 hours and the dogs are driving you nuts. You're down in Colorado. Well, hopefully you got a good scenery. You got a good view. I love when you're coming into Denver and you got the mountains behind, right? When you're coming in from the, from the east and you're coming in and you basically you're doing the rolling hills and then you come up over the very last one of the last ones and you're not in Denver. Denver's still like, I don't know, 15 miles away. But then you got the whole mountain range across and it's right behind. And it's it's that's that's one of the most beautiful sights you'll ever see. It's one of the most beautiful sights you've ever seen. Turgul, what's for breakfast? You know what? That's a good question. Um, probably going to grab some yogurt. I'm not a big breakfast eater, right? No, no more work, baby. They got nothing for me upstairs. Um, I'm not a big breakfast eater. So if I do eat breakfast, um, actually, <sighs> hold on here. Hold on. Here's my breakfast right here. <sighs> Had the same thing yesterday. One orange, one banana. That's about that's about as much as I can eat. That's about as much as I can eat. I can't eat any more than that, um, because because of the way I've lived and the way my my body is accustomed. Um, when I eat a meal, I get a little dozy, right? Your body takes energy to to digest. Well, um, if I was to eat like a big breakfast, I usually need to go, I need to go sit down. Like when we have a big breakfast on Sunday mornings or on Saturday mornings when we're at home, I can't just jump up and go take off and go do shit because I'm just like, Oh, like that. Um, so that's why I will eat. I'll eat this. And this is a good breakfast for me. So I'll eat this with a little bit of yogurt and that's, that's all I'm going to eat. And that's all I eat all day. Right now. That doesn't mean that I haven't been known to occasionally munch on one of these while I'm, uh, while I'm driving, but, um, if I don't eat anything. What about YouTube with the smokes? What are they going to do? Strike me again? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know what? Um, I'm smoking my cigar. If any of you are offended by the fact that I'm sitting here smoking a cigar, then you're offended by it, not me. And it's it's whoever is offended by it, uh, they're offended by it, not me. And it's, if you don't want to see me smoke a cigar, then swipe, go somewhere else. Um, and if you want to smoke a cigar, I got no problem sitting there watching you. I don't I don't care what you're smoking. Uh, Ryan, uh, good weed. Well. You'd have to be to be dancing around in your underwear like that. You'd have to be. 
I may come meet you later. That would be awesome since I'm barely going to see you this weekend. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Um, yeah, TJ, I took, uh, uh, TJ, sorry. Fuck you. Remind me of somebody else. Uh, Tara Julia, um, I, uh, I took a strike on yesterday's live. Um, somebody reported that I, I was smoking a cigar live and they put it out as that I was promoting. When I took the strike, they give you a, an explanation and they were saying I was promoting, uh, smoking. So, uh, I took a strike. Now, Dara's fighting it, and she's pretty good at fighting these. And they they bumped my channel for viewership into an 18 plus only. But I automatically do that anyway. When, when I before I start the live, it asks me, "Is this audible? Is this audience suitable for children, or is it 18 plus?" And I always click 18 plus. It's not, and it says 18 plus not suitable for children. I always click that. So why YouTube is now moving my channel into the 18 plus is, I don't know. I've already, I've already done it. You're, yeah, Jim, you're right. It's your own space. It's my, it, it, so what's the problem? Well, I, I guess I'm promoting, you know, I'm standing here, you know, sitting here promoting it. And, and I don't, I don't promote smoking. I don't, you know, it's not a good thing. I don't say it is a good thing. Um, I'd be willing to bet you half the motherfuckers sitting at YouTube's in the office right now, probably go out twice, three times a morning for a cigarette themselves. So what the hell? What the hell? Go look at the community page if you want to be offended. <laughs> yeah, I do. Baby, why don't you, uh, what time is it? It is, uh, it's 10 o'clock. Why don't you come up and we'll do like a later lunch or something. We'll go, we'll go into town and go for lunch or something. If this try. If this truck, I think we have a few, I'll take a good, uh, I'll take a look, guard dog. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's nice that we live, I live, I live close enough that she can do that, but it sucks because if I lived like another 30 miles closer, I'd probably, it would probably be worth it to drive back and forth every day. Right. But because of the hours that I work, I'd have to leave. The, now I'd have to leave the house at like 11 o'clock at night. And I'm not doing that. So this way here is the way it is. And unfortunately, it's just the way it works out. But on a day like today, it's it's good because like she can jump in the car and it's only an hour and a bit for her to get up here. We can go for lunch, you know, go to Walmart, whatever, do some walking around and and uh, and then she can just bugger off and go home. I'm not even dressed yet and haven't had breakfast. I'll have a small breakfast and come meet you for maybe one. No, that's fine. That's perfect. One o'clock's good. I've got an orange. I've got an orange and a banana. So, you know, we're good. Go see him naked. Well, she doesn't have to. Sh she doesn't have to show up to the truck naked. But when she gets in, there's you know. There's there's a playpen back there. Although I don't think she's in the mood now that she's seen Ryan in his underwear. That may that may have killed it for me. Thanks, Ryan. You cock blocked me. No, no, no nookie for me because Ryan showed up in his underwear. Okay, hold on. I, now I gotta go. I, I gotta go look. No, she brings that with her, John. <laughs> Okay, I can't believe I just saw that. Good job, Ryan. That that took that was a really good that was a good clean car. Hold on, I, I, I'm I'm wiping. I'm trying to get the lenses clean on my eyeballs. <laughs> good job, buddy. I like how you operate. I don't. I can't. Uh, what I can't understand is why is there's not a lineup of 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 crazed women parked outside your your car wash waiting for you to wash their car. Now, hold on. I got to ask, though. I got to ask, though, Ryan, I got to ask, honestly, was uh, was the person in the car whose car you were washing? Were they sitting in the car? Were they sitting in the car? I don't know, man, how comfortable I'd be sitting in my car with having <laughs> you walking around like that, washing it. That was awesome, though. Oh. Matrix YT, I'm back. 
He's back. Look out, boys. Matrix is back. Well, I'm, I'm myself personally, Matrix, I'm glad you're back. Thanks for coming back. Appreciate it. We've seen you around now a couple of times. Maybe throw a wrench at you. If you behave yourself today, we'll throw a wrench at you. Make you an honorary member. That's uh, our local guy here. This guy works his ass off. He runs back and forth and loads those reels. And the yard, the, the Prismium yard for those is only like 16 miles away. He'll load like four of those a day and then run into Montreal. No, it was your own car. Okay, so you only had to torture your own eyeballs. There you go. That's awesome. What's going on, Quinn? How are you, man? I'm I'm actually done early. I'm not happy about this, let me tell you. I'm not overly thrilled about this, um, but I am. I'm done work early, so that's why we are live at what time in the morning? 10, 10, 15 in the morning, and that's why I'm parked. I hate this. I hate this because I I will literally, I will literally, and, and, and we were talking, I was talking with Sterling earlier, and we were d discussing this, that I'm the type of person that if I'm sitting somewhere and I'm watching other people working, I'm not watching them work. I'm watching them earn money. And that bothers me. Right. And if somebody else is lazy and they don't want to work, that's fine. It suits me just fine. I got no problem with lazy people. You know, I have no problem whatsoever with lazy people, because if you're lazy, that means you're leaving money out on the table. And you know what? I will get it. I will be more than happy to go take that money and, and earn that money and put it in my pocket. And that's just the way I'm built. So for me to sit around now until one o'clock tomorrow morning, this is hard. This is hard. Snow Rider, get paid, go home, get laid. Well, I can't go home, but I got I got paid okay today. We made our money, right? We we made we're still profitable even doing one turn. So I made my money, um, but I don't have to go home to get laid because the laid is coming to the paid. She's gonna come up and uh, meet me for lunch. And we're going to eat lunch. We're going to eat lunch. You perverts. We're going to eat lunch. You guys are, you guys are sick, man. I know exactly what you guys were going to say. I, good thing I cut that one off. Especially with Snore Rider running around. Star is a special lady. You got it. Muncha, muncha, Fritos go with luncha. Well, <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. Funny enough, I'm a Dorito guy. Fritos, okay in a pinch, but I'm a Dorito guy. So muncha, muncha, Doritos go with luncha. But, believe it or not, I can't eat them anymore. Right? No teeth. Doritos are a bitch to eat with no teeth. It's like trying to eat Captain Crunch with normal teeth. You end up slicing up the inside of your mouth. So Doritos are off. The only potato chips I can eat are like regular like Ruffles potato chips. I'm missing my Doritos. Dar bought me a bag, I don't know, a week, a couple of weeks ago, and I tried to eat it. I sat there on, the, on my recliner watching a movie. I'd eat, try to eat a piece. I'd give one to Charlie the dog. I think the dog ate more of them than I did. Oh, me too. Doritos rules the chip world. Oh, absolutely. And I'm not a big, like, I like just plain Doritos, like regular Doritos, not like the jalapenos or the zesty or any of that kind of shit. Um, I like, uh, I just like plain Doritos, the ones, the originals. Dude, those things are like heroin. Damn, couldn't fat, couldn't, couldn't type that fast enough. Uh -huh. Well, if you guys were around, I'd say, come on up. Dar's taking us all out to lunch. But you guys, unfortunately, none of these are here. Bullshit. I knew a guy that ate them with his gums. Well, 
I've tried. Dude, I got no teeth, not one. So eating Doritos, the, the only way I discovered that I could actually eat them is you got to put them in your mouth, press them up against the top with your tongue, press them up against the top of your mouth and let them get a little soggy. And then you can, I guess, gum them to death or whatever, whatever you do. But Doritos aren't, they're no fun to eat like that, right? It takes you four hours to eat a bag of Doritos. Put a piece of bread in the bed bag, reseal it, and they become soft, but not stale. Are you serious? I've never even heard of that, Ryan. Does that work? Put a piece of bread in the bag, like just a piece of regular white bread, right? Just a regular piece of white. Okay. I'll try that. Man, if it'll work, it'll, you're, 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 that's, that's life-saving advice right there. Right. Speaking of chips, I like barbecue Lay's. That's Dar's favorite. Dar's favorite. Dar loves barbecued uh, barbecued laid potato chips. Salt and vinegar. I like salt and vinegar. I'm, my two favorite, like like Doritos, I don't consider a potato chip. Doritos are Doritos. But if I'm eating potato chips, um, sour cream and onion, all dressed, and salt and vinegar chips. Any one of those, I'm good. Lunchbox. Ironic, eh? Ironic. We're talking about snacks and somebody named Lunchbox comes in. The same tr uh, same trick works to soften cookies. You see, I didn't even know this trick because I haven't been eating a lot of cookies. Dar's, Dar's sitting there going, you fucking idiot. Shut up. You know, you know, because I haven't been eating a lot of cookies or a lot of potato chips or anything like that. So um, now that I know, if I, if I think, so if I take a bag of like, uh, uh, double double chocolate chip uh, chocolate chip cookies. If I take like 15 or 20 cookies and put them in a Ziploc bag with a piece of bread, it'll like well, how long do you got to leave it? Like overnight? You got to leave it for a couple of hours? Like how does that work? Will Brunner texted you a couple of pics. Oh man, come on. I've I've had enough brain damage today looking at Ryan. Yeah, your meth head uncle did it. Well, that explains that explains a lot. Miss Vicky's original. Um, we have Miss Vicky's in the house. The kids like those, but not me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sour cream and onion, all dressed and, and salt and vinegar, or I'm a Doritos guy. Uh, cookies, I eat Oreos, double stuffed Oreos, all day long. And then uh, we have it in Canada. You, they're, they're, they don't have it in the U.S. We have a, a, something called President's Choice. It's like a, an off-brand of Loblaws. And they have, uh, a, it's like a premium double chocolate, uh, double chocolate chip cookie. And let me tell you something, they're better than grandma makes. They really are. They really, really are. They are fantastic. So if I can put a piece of bread in that with the cookies, I'll be doing that too. Yeah, but how? Somebody give me an answer here. How long you got to leave them in the bag? How long you got to leave the bread in the bag? Is it like an overnight thing? Oh, like a day. Okay, Ryan, like a day. So if I, if I put it in in the morning, if I grabbed all my cookies and put them in a bag, like a Ziploc bag, and then put a piece of bread in and just sealed it, and just left it till the next day, the next morning they'd be good to eat. I'll do the same thing with my potato chips. This is awesome. You guys don't realize this is hooking me up. I appreciate this. Um, now you will like these logo picks, pick ideas. Okay. Oh, is it, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to, okay, hold on. I got to go. I got to go look at these. Otherwise it's going to fucking drive me nuts. Sexy John. I really like the second one. Really like the second one. I could I could actually do something with that. That would make like a really good T-shirt, right? That would make a that would make a I think I think that would make an awesome T-shirt. The second one. First one was good. Second one was, I'd use it. If uh, if you give me your express written permission consent to to use those, I got no problem putting that on a fucking T-shirt. I'll even send you the first one. Yeah, I can use it. Okay. Thanks, man.
the moisture goes from the bread to whatever else is in the bag. Okay. You want one in the front pocket, no sleeves. Whatever you want, dude. Whatever you want. You tell me what you want it on, I'll put it, I'll have it put on. Hey, Umberto, how are you, brother? Uh, I'm parked for the day. I've, uh, I ended up with only one load today. The second one canceled. So I'm, I got one load. So I'm already parked. Sitting here smoking cigars, looking at the weather. We've got a beautiful, beautiful day out. So I'm not close enough to home yet. Well, drive faster. Drive faster. You're not driving fast enough. I know that I know that wagon you're driving doesn't have uh, isn't governed. So step it up, man. Push that thing to the floor. I would never give Brian. I will never give Brian consent to anything. You are a very smart man, very very smart man, because you know me. You give me an inch, I'm gonna take a mile, a mile. Cheap freight dollar. Good morning, everyone. Been home since Monday. Hopefully going back to work tomorrow, dude. Hopefully you. Uh, I hope you weren't home for something like you weren't sick. You didn't break anything. Everything's cool. You're good. Just took a couple of days off to relax, get high, have a few drinks. You include Dar? You included, I included Dar? Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, weather is fantastic today. I'm in Long Island. Yeah, I know a bunch of people that like to be drinking Long Islands right now. I'm not one of them, but I know a few that would. This is how people with no teeth and no fingernails have to open their oranges. What's going on? Slim, I'm at the yard. I'm at the yard. Uh, I finished early today. We've already done a, a small, small driving video. It wasn't very long, maybe a couple of hours. So, did a small driving video. Second load got uh, second load got canceled. The train didn't make it into the yard uh, for the switch line in time. So there was no uh, no ingots to pull, and the ingot yard was pretty much empty when I rolled in there this morning to get loaded. So they parked us, no more work, which is, you know, okay. I did, I did three yesterday, so I'm technically, I'm actually still on par for a normal week, but it kind of, it kind of takes the wind out of your sails that when you kill yourself yesterday to do three and then they shut you down today and you, what's the sense in doing that? I could have done two yesterday and two today. So either way, either way. I'm driving, but not I'm not a Long Island. You're too poor. Yeah, they're expensive drinks. Statute limitations is like a speed limit for sissies. Kind of, kind of. I'm I'm kind of glad we have statute of limitations. I guarantee you, there'd still be people, or certain law enforcement elements looking for me if there wasn't. We do have statute of limitations in Canada, just like you guys do in the U.S. Do hold on. Guard Dog is sending me pictures for logos, which are awesome. And now Dar is sending him pictures back. She, she has nice boobs, doesn't she, Johnny? Take a look at those pictures. She's got really nice. I got to tell you, eh? I know you're agreeing with me. If you're looking at the pictures that she sent you, she's got really nice jugs. Next to her eyes and her smile, her boobs, man. Oh, all day long. All day long. She's going to kick me in the ass when she gets up here. That's okay. Luckily, I'm 6'2". She can't get her foot that high.
you guys don't mind if I just smoke my cigar and eat bananas and oranges while you're watching, do you? I don't mind at all. I don't mind at all. I'm going to use the close-up of Wheel Burner Express, uh, crop the image, and place it in the second pick. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah, Ryan, did you ever? Did you ever? I got to say, though, bro, I, I am a boob guy. And those are spectacular. They are they are spectacular, Ryan. I, 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 it doesn't matter that you're a guy. I'll give credit where credit is due. You, you got a nice rack on you, bud. <laughs> Never thought I'd ever hear myself say that. Eating beer. <laughs> Actually, Dar, you're absolutely right. I think Curtis would be jealous if he saw Ryan's tits. I think I think Ryan rivals, actually trumps Curtis. We might we might have to have a we might have to have a man a man titty off or whatever you call that like a, a, a titty contest between Ryan and between Ryan and Dirty Curtis. Dar, you might want to send Curtis a message. Send him a message and tell him to look in the community and see that picture of Ryan and say that he's been, make sure you tell Curtis that he's been bumped. He's no longer the king. He, Ryan, Ryan now has the crown. I, 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 I fully endorse that, Ryan. You now have the crown, okay, for the man hooters. Though you have the very first, you have the second annual wheel burner man hooters contest winner. No, I didn't get another load, Humberto. Just the one. Curtis lost, eh? Houdini? Did you go look at it, Houdini? I think uh, I think Curtis I think Curtis takes second on that one. I think Ryan Ryan. Not only did Ryan come in, but he just came in with authority. Go look in my community. Go look in the wheel burner community, Houdini. And I, I don't know if you remember. I'm sure you do. You've been around long enough. There was that there was that video I put up of Curtis riding my lawnmower, my riding mower, and he had the man boobs and everything. Well, Ryan Davidson just put up a fly, put up a picture and gave Dar permission to put it in our community. So uh, she put it up in the community, and I, I honestly say, okay, well, the Houdini, go look at the go look at Ryan in the community and tell me who wins. Is it is it Ryan or is it Ryan or is it uh, uh, is it is it Curdy? I think I think Ryan took the title. Curtis held on to it for two years. I think Ryan just cut, came in and kicked him in the nuts. What's up, Brian? Checking in from the beautiful city of Whitby. I know you're being sarcastic because I've not seen anything beautiful in Whitby in a long, long time. Well, dude, you're only like 90 miles from me. Get up here and buy me lunch. Dar's actually Dar's coming up about one o'clock to take me out for lunch. So why don't you hook up and, and, and Dar will buy us both lunch. Y'all have a great day date. I'm going to hop off so I can work on this logo. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate it, man. Love you, brother. Yeah, Curtis lost, eh? Oh, hands down. I saw it. <laughs> Absolutely. Caden Nelson. Hi. How are you, man? Uh, I'm from West Virginia. Brother, that's one of my favorite places to drive. West Virginia, Virginia, North, South Carolina, that whole area down there. Love it. Love it. Love West Virginia, man. Thanks for popping in here. Thanks for saying hi, man. We love West Virginians in here. The only thing I don't like about well, West Virginia is okay. The only thing I don't like about Virginia is the goddamn scales are always open, even on Christmas Day, right? That scale on 81 at the north and the south end of Virginia, always open. I 
Actually, you're using my business account to pay for lunch. Okay, everybody forget it. Lunch is off. Sorry, 15, you're out of luck. I would love to go, but got to go check my new truck. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I bought a Mac Anthem. Nice. Nice. I, I'd be good in it. Well, I'd be good and bad in a Mac Anthem. I like them. Don't get me wrong. I love the look on them. I'm in absolutely in love with the look on them. And if you've got like the blackout edition, oh, dude, I got wood, right? Um, the Mac Anthem. But I did a complete tour on one, and then I took it for a drive, and I did a, a thing on it. Um, performed well, drove well, everything like that. I don't think you're going to get the fuel mileage out of it that the Volvos get. Um, but you'll still be in the 8-plus mile per gallon range. Uh, excuse me. And uh, the only thing I found with them, 15, was the inside. Now, I don't know how big you are. I don't know how big a guy you are. But, like, I'm 6'2", right, bordering around two between 215 and 220 pounds. And I found that when I got into it, like with the big bunk, when I got into it, um, I found that the bunk – wasn't big enough. Like my Cascadia has more room side to side. I, I can go side to side in this. I had I have more room in the Cascadia. And when I had the 730 Volvo, that thing was like even bigger than this Cascadia. So I had a whole lot more room. I found with the with the Max, um, they were a little more cramped. Um, well built though, nicely built. I was I, they're comfortable trucks. Um, I never had a load on one. I took one out bobtail and just tootled around in it. I liked it. Um, I can't say how they are in durability, but I love them. Congratulations. I'm happy for you, man. If that's, if that's what you wanted, man, congratulations. Um, yeah, that's exactly Humberto. He's going to have to change his name to MP8. No, you do because those all come out of the factory. Those MP8s, those, those Max, they all come out of the factory. It's an MP8, 13 liter engine, and they all come out at 505 horse. So your new handle is now instead of DD15, it's going to be MP8-505. That's what it's going to. That's what it's going to be. All right, baby. Just let me know when you're on your way up, eh? Let me know when you're on your way up. I think you're, the reason I think your scales are closed is because there's uh, not enough people to man them on Christmas, probably. Well, the West Virginia scale is not is not as bad. It's it's open and closed. It's it's hit and miss, whatever. The Virginia scales are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, right? And they are. Uh, Sterling and I were joking about this earlier because we were talking about it that they are they are also the most finicky scale. Like I got busted for being. I think I was like 800 pounds over gross, right? So I was 80,800 pounds. Any other scale in the country would have let me go on that, but they didn't. They busted me. And you know what? The, the only good thing about Virginia is when you're overweight, the fine is a penny a pound. So if you're 800 pounds over, the fine is eight bucks. The administrative charge is 30 bucks. The scale charge, because they reweigh you, so the rescale was like 25 bucks. So you're paying like seven, almost $70 for an $8 fine. Funny. Office in Carson, 911, first responder. Hi. What's going on there, buddy? Long time no see. I haven't seen you around. That is the one I always wanted to work with for Mac. Yeah. That's, it, they're nice trucks. Those Anthems are good looking trucks. I think they're sexy as hell. Just don't, I was going to say, don't get a white one, but hopefully I don't know what color his is. DD15, what color is your truck? Hopefully it's not white. I'm 6'1", Brian. I like it. It's single bunk owner up spec. It's 455. Okay, so you're now going to be MP8-455. That's what we'll call you from now on. I would put it this way, DD15, I would have no issue. If somebody handed me one, or if I was buying a new truck and that one there came in at the right price and I could get it for, you know, blah, 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 
I'd have no trouble with it. I could adjust to the, the size. Um, what about mine? <clears throat> Brian, now MX-13 510. But here's the funny thing about all, the, all you guys driving around with these 13-liter engines at 500 horsepower. You don't need it. You don't need 510 horsepower. You're, all you're doing is pushing fuel away. I can promise you, I can promise you, an MX-13 engine, right? MX-13 engine, that's the PACCAR engine. Um, uh, at 455 or 465 horsepower is all you need. And take your torque settings down to 1720 with a 12-speed automated transmission. That is a 9-mile-per-gallon truss plus. 9 plus mile per gallon truck. At 510, you don't need that. You don't need to be the first one to the top of the hill. You don't need to be the fastest guy off the light. You don't need any of that. You don't need it. These days, you are building your trucks these days for fuel mileage, folks. Fuel mileage. You're not building them for horsepower. Those days that we used to run down the road at 90 miles an hour with our hair on fire, racing up and down hills as fast as we could go with 600 horsepower, those days are gone. Those days are gone. And if you're trying to relive that, oh, I've got a big 550 horsepower. Unless you're pulling super heavyweights, right? Like these guys that I'm working with here, these guys that are pulling the quad axles, right? And they got 155,000 pounds, right? Okay. Their trucks are dialed. Those, those they've got the X-15s and those things there are dialed up to 600 horse. But that's what they need, right? That's what they need. If you're, if you're just pulling general freight and you're just pulling regular everyday freight, you don't need 500 horse. 455, 465 is all you need, man. Otherwise, you're wasting engine. Am I on a dedicated run all year round? Well, I'm on, I'm on this dedicated run. It's a contract. But it's an open-ended contract. There's no end. So when the, supply, when the supply runs out or the demand for this product runs out, the contract will end. Um, but... As, as for the time being, I was, I was speaking with ownership the other day, and uh, right now the demand is high, and they're looking that this is probably going to go to the end, possibly go to the end of the year. And I'm good with that. It's white. Oh! Oh! Now, the, the good thing about the white, okay, the good thing about the white, and I don't suggest this because I'm, I'm not a chrome guy anymore, but at least with the white, if it didn't come with a couple of the chrome accents, like the window visors or anything like that, you can put the window visors on it, the chrome window visors on it. It looks good. Get the chrome for the outside of the mirrors, like the outside, the chrome pieces. They look good on the white. Um, but damn, white trucks, white trucks are a motherfucker. They really are. What about a, D, a D10 dozer? What do you think about hauling them around? Um, I've had probably a thousand dozers of every type of configuration on my trailer. I've pulled heavy, uh, heavy haul and oversized for about 16 years. So if, if, if any, any kind of earth moving equipment, dozers, back hauls, uh, combines, anything like that, um, I've probably had it on my trailer at some point or another. I've pulled it. Eamon, good to see you, brother. Good afternoon. Is uh, that Reno scale? What? Reynoso scale? What on God's green earth are you talking about, son? Humberto, the trucking guy, thanks for the conversation, brother. Uh, could, couldn't be able to say before, still working. My pet was 5'10 also, Brian. My Pete was 5'10 also, and I, I, had, I lowered to 455. There you go. I'm at 475, T-Bone. T-Bone, I'm at 465, right? I just, when, when I got it, she was 505. Um, and I took it down to 465. And my torque settings were at 1780. I took them down to 1720. And this is now a nine mile per 8.8 .8 to nine mile per gallon truck. Same rear ends as you. I got the 308s with a 12. You don't want, you, you know, I wish it had a little more torque too. But like I said, T-Bone, you and I are both driving the same truck. You know what? I'd rather let the other guy make it to the top of the hill, five truck lengths ahead of me but I've got three quarters of a gallon more fuel at the top of the hill than he does. You know, it, it's fuel, dude. At the end of the week, at the end of the week, the one with the most fuel wins the race, not who got there first or fastest. That's just, unfortunately, those days are gone, bro. Those days are gone.
Yeah, I know you're not going to pull dry van, but it's the same thing pulling pulling flatbed, right? Flatbed, unless you're doing heavy haul consi consistently, then you then you dial up your horsepower. But if you're just going to be doing flat regular flatbed, and it's on you know everyday freight, and your average you know your eighty thousand pound max, four fifty five, four sixty five is where you be. That's all you need to be. Oh shit, there's a hyena outside my yard. Yo, know, there's a hyena. You got a gun? At 22, I'll take a hyena down. I own I owned an 06 Coronado, an 01 uh, Pete 379, an 03 Columbia, all Detroit Series 60. But right now, mile per gallon is where it's at. So I had to get into these new emission trucks. Those pre-emission won't get nothing better than six. Dude, I came out of a 97 W9 with a 12760 series and bought this. I know, I know exactly. The best I could pull with that 60 series was 6.1. 6.1 was the best I could pull with that. Mind you, the W9 is like pushing a brick through the air, right? There's no aerodynamics to it, right? It's like pushing a brick. But the the difference in fuel between that W9 and this Cascadia, I went from a W9 with no truck payment to this Cascadia with a truck payment, and the fuel savings makes my truck payment and still puts 1800 to 2000 dollars a month in my pocket so i'm still making 2000 dollars more a month and with a truck payment right now i i didn't want to think that was even possible a few years ago and i'll give credit where credit was due it was ronan that that challenged me to do that ronan from the et channel Ronan put the, put me onto that, and we did the we did the whole test with the W9, let it run 90 days, then we did 90 days in this, and blah blah blah, and compared it. The Cascadia, the money just blew. You know, it's mind boggling when you think about it. I don't know about you, DD15, but I'll take an extra two grand a month in my pocket all day long, all day long. When the new civil war happens, the guys who have earth moving equipment will be okay. Yeah, no shit. I'm at 1650. Okay, so if you wanted to, T-Bone, you could take that up to 1720 and give yourself a little bit more, a little bit more. Remember, torque doesn't make you go any faster, right? All torque does is torque is what you rely on when you're taking off from the from the light or when you're doing the hard when you get into the hard pulls. That's where your torque kicked in. So if you're at 1650, you need a little bit more torque, take it up to 1720. You don't need anything more than that. Like I said, I came out at 505 at 1780 and it was too much. I don't need that. Took it took it down to 465 and I'm at 1720. Dude, nine mile per gallon truck. How do you adjust your torque settings? Do you adjust it by a push of a button? No, we have to go. You basically you either have the computer yourself, which I don't, or you take it into the dealership. So the next time your truck goes in for something at the shop, if they have to plug the truck in, as long as they've got it plugged in, go, hey. Do me a favor. Can you readjust this? I need you to take the horsepower down to 465 or 475, whatever you want, and readjust my torque set. And they do it on the computer, and it's it's done like that. That movie told the soon-to-be future. What did I miss? What movie are you talking about? The new Civil War happens. Listen, you take care of the truck. The truck takes care of you. Absolutely. My International 90 was doing 6.5, and my Peat 5 was way over nine miles. Yeah, and you probably made another couple hundred, a couple thousand bucks a month, right? So do truckers pay for their own fuel, or does the trucking company? It all depends. Caden, I'm an owner-operator, so I own my truck. Um, that truck beside me, that truck beside me, that's a company truck. Same company, right? It's on with the same company. I've leased myself on to this company. So it's the same company, same name on the door, but I own this truck. The guy that drives that truck is an employee. He works for the company. So as an owner operator, I'm responsible for all the bills. I pay all the fuel, the insurance. I pay the repairs, tires, whatever. That's all on me. That guy over there, if anything happens to that truck and it breaks down, he picks up the phone and he dials 1-800-COME-FIX-MY-SHIT and somebody comes and fixes it for him. He doesn't have to pay a thing. 220 gallons, I was doing 650 miles per day, and I was able to work three days on full tanks. Yeah, nice, isn't it? Holy crap, the hyena is huge. And no, I don't have a gun, but now nah, he'll walk away, right? You're asking me? I don't know. 
You better hope he does. Either that or he's going to look through your window and see you and say, oh, snack. Well, a hyena is probably not big enough to take you down by yourself, but uh, this uh, this KW6 uh, T6A should be the same, uh, and now will be step deck, so should even be better not dragging the dry van. Do yeah, remember though, Civil War the movie. Okay, remember though, when you pull a when you pull a flatbed. Your fuel mileage goes down, even though you would think, well, why? Because the freight is lower down on the deck. The way the air goes over the top of your truck with a dry van, it actually goes up and then catches the top of the trailer and then goes up over the trailer. And that's how they're designed to work. With flatbeds, the, the air actually comes down, sc scoops down like, uh, like this, it swirls down behind the truck. And it doesn't matter if the freight is only three feet off the deck. It's not aerodynamic. It's just the way it works. It, uh, unfortunately, it's just the way it works. So if you've got a 10, uh, like a nine mile per gallon truck pulling a van, you're probably, uh, and you're probably going to get eight miles per, 8.5 miles per gallon pulling a, a step deck. Step deck, maybe even a little bit better because it, you've got the kick and the, tr the freight is usually a little like if you're pulling short stuff, it'll be even even lower. But with a flatbed, you generally get worse mileage with a flatbed than you do with a van. Just got the GoFundMe transferred, uh, and within four two to four days, he will start construction on Marshall's ramp. Guys, I'm stoked. Man, we are so happy for you. We are so happy for you. That is awesome. That is awesome. The truck next to you is exactly like mine, but mine was uh, OO spec. Yeah, these ones aren't owner operator spec, but they're not fleet spec either. They're like kind of in the middle. These ones have the, uh, the, the 579 Epics, so they got the big bunk on them. They got the 80 inch bunk on them, and, uh, and they're very comfortable. They're nice. Um, they're not poorly spec. Like they don't have the, the cheap shit floors in them or anything like that. They've got the, the nicer floor and all that. Um, but they, they're not owner operator top of the line spec. Humberto, the trucking guy, your MPG actually made me look at these new emissions trucks while I was doing 65 miles an hour at 1500 RPM. You were doing 1250 at 65. New Mac is 323. I will change it, uh, change it to 264. Uh, on, those, on those there, the 264 gear ratio with the uh, 12 speed, is is that's the pinnacle right there that's that's the money shot for those trucks the volvo volvo was the very first one to do it i think they started doing it back in 2017 or 2018 they had the uh, the i uh, the i shift but they had the 264 rear ends with the 12 speed automated with overdrive and those trucks were getting fucking like 10 miles a gallon it was stupid the mileage fuel mileage those things were getting my truck here at 65 miles an hour, I'm just under, I'm just, just over 1200, right? I got 308s in this, so I'm just over 1200 RPM, and that's that's beautiful at 65. At 75 miles an hour, I'm at 1450. I'm not even at 1500 RPM at 75 miles an hour, and I'm good. I'm good with that. I'm absolutely good with that. My RPM was 1150 on the Pete, and the Ken, Kenworth says it's about 1,100, yeah. Howdy from North Kakalaka. How we doing there, buddy? How we doing? Love that, love that tester. Love that tester. I showed you that Dar was looking at it as well. She thought that was the, the finished product. And I'm going, no, that's his testing board. It's like, holy shit. Holy shit. It's like, we are stoked, dude. We are stoked. These cornhole boards are going to be awesome. Just so you guys don't know, um, Mr. Bees is doing these boards for us and we're going to, we're going to raffle them off at the charity, um, at the, at the beard shaving thing, uh, charity. And we're going to raffle these boards off for as much as we can get. Now I haven't seen the finished product. He's only sent me like a tester or someone showing me pictures of a tester. Let me tell you, let me tell you, I am stoked. It is phenomenal. You guys are not going to be disappointed. And I am, I am, I am, I am sure these are going to get snatched up really quick. Oi, oi. 
on a break for 30 minutes? Somebody said about half an hour ago or 45 minutes ago, you were, you were live. Were you live? Do they have a wing you can put on the back to keep it a little more aerodynamic? Wait, well, on the back of the truck? Um, it depends on the truck. If you've got like a midroof, where's there? Do we have a midroof around here? Yeah, we do. Hold on a second. If you've got a midroof, right? You know the old the old W nines and the old three seven nines. You'd see them with that great big uh, stainless steel wing, right on the top of it. Those are those are for good because those are midroof trailers, or midroof trucks. And what they would do is uh, put the wing on it to push the air up over the top of the van trailer. Um, because if you don't have it, there's usually anywhere from 18 to 20 inches from the top of the trailer to the top, or from the yeah from the top of the trailer down to the top of the truck, and you're just eating air. It's just you're killing your fuel mileage, right? So what they did is they started to put those wings on them. But not every truck could take a wing, so they came up with what's called a whale tail. And it's a smaller wing that actually goes on. So if you've got a, here, I'll show you, turn this around. There's a picture right there's a, that's a midroof right there, right? That's a, it's a midroof Peterbilt. So on the back of the bunk, um, about, if you, if you come about seven inches from the back of the bunk, there'd be a whale tail on there. And it's just a small fiberglass scoop usually painted the same color as uh same color as the as the truck and it goes on there and it's enough just to push the air off the top of the truck and up over the trailer so you're not eating as much uh you're not eating as much air right i'm okay it didn't see me that's good that's good i'd hate to i'd hate to see your next comment as ouch can somebody call 911 i need an ambulance Old school trucking. What's going on, brother? Morning, everybody. Old school. We're just talking about old school trucks. Humberto. Yeah, mine was an 80-inch. Very comfortable. Even the uh, exhalation. Big difference. I don't know what exhalation is. Hey, wheel burner. Heads up. In Huntington, West Virginia, there's a whole lot of construction going on, especially on the interstate. So, yeah, I'm just letting you know in case you have to come my, to my state. Well, for the next time, for the time being, I'm, I'm running between Ontario, Canada, down to Oswego, New York. And that's all I'm going to be doing for the next little while while, I'm up, while I've got this contract. But as soon as this contract is up and I go back out onto the, the open market, I'm out on the load board and out on, uh, out on the uh, regular board. I could be going anywhere from West Virginia to Seattle, Washington. Are you going to upgrade anytime soon? You know there's good deals these days, lots of repos. I I am I have a split feeling, 15. I have split feelings about repos. Okay? Um yes, you can get a really good deal on a repo and I've looked at quite a few of them. The problem I've got is if the guy didn't have the cash to pay the truck and it had to be repoed, he probably didn't have the cash to maintain it properly. So let's just say he's got a, let's say he's got a 21 or a 22. That means that truck's been out there for two years driving and it probably hasn't been maintained properly because if he's not making the payments, he's not making the maintenance, doing the maintenance on it either. So that I always have in the back of my head. Um, but am I upgrading anytime soon? Uh, no, uh, my plan is to keep this truck at least until the end of uh, summer and fall, maybe into the fall. This truck will stay. That I have several options that I'm looking at um, uh, for doing. Um, new truck is one of them, um, but I also have a couple other options that Dar and I are exploring. So. Don't remember what mine is. Uh, what is mine DD15, but I think is 308, need to see. What do you think will be better for flatbed, Brian? Keep the 308 or change, or if it's 308, need to see, I have the paper. You can do, you can do, uh, you can keep 308s for flatbed. Dude, 308s are just fine for flatbed, because because you've got a you've got an automated transmission and you're not changing gears, your 308s are fine because the computer, remember when, when, when you've got a manual transmission and you have to climb a hill, you got to manually start gearing down, you know, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, all the way down. 
With an automated, even though you've got longer legs than a 308, if you're in 12th gear, you start climbing a hill. Well, that thing doesn't drop down to 11th. It'll drop down to 10. And then it might go to 9. And then it might go down to 7, right? It jumps gears, just like when you're taking off. It doesn't go, you don't start in like 3 and then go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Mine goes, starts in 3rd and goes 3, 5, 7, 9, 12. Bam, right? So with the 308s, you're fine. Absolutely fine. Anyone heading uh, Indianapolis, 465 on the south side is construction ridden, 45 mile an hour max speed. Good to know. I don't have to worry about it, but good to know. Get it out there. I'll be honest with you. My next truck, if I buy another truck, um, I'll be buying a, a new one and my next truck will probably be another Cascadia, right? It'll probably be another, it'll probably be another Freightliner Cascadia. Um, I've, I've got no problems with these. They're a little cheaper to buy them. If you're buying them brand new, they're a little cheaper to buy them. Um, they're e cheaper to maintain. You can get them fixed anywhere, like anywhere, right? If, if it's a Freightliner issue, it has to go to Freightliner, but you can stand on the roof of this truck right now and throw a rock in any direction, and hit a Freightliner dealer. Right. And if, if it's a motor issue because it's a Detroit, you can take it in. You can take it. You can take a Detroit into Volvo or into Mac or into Western Star or into fucking Kenworth or Peter. They all work on them. So unless it's a Freightliner issue, it has to go to Freightliner. But if it's a motor issue, you can take it anywhere. Same with the trans and the divs on my truck. They're all Mercedes. Right. So they're all Detroit. Yours is 308. So, no, you're fine. Leave it at 308. I better come to Dallas. What have you got in Dallas that I ain't got here? Besides you running around naked in a truck wash. Oh shit, no 911. Won't work. Have to use 010111 South African police. Yeah, I guess 911 ain't gonna work, eh? Yeah, I'm moving right along with them. Uh, just frustrated with picking the color of the trucks. Dude, don't ask me about that. I leave that 100% in your hands um, because I guarantee whatever you pick will, won't disappoint. It really won't disappoint. It, it, you know, those, those, like I said, the testing boards were off the hook, absolutely off the hook. So very, very pleased. Uh, my truck, uh, my truck was a repo. Uh, I did got the good deal on my truck. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I'm going to move on. All right, Caden. Good to see you, man. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the like button. Appreciate that. Repos are, repos are iffy. If you can get a repo with the maintenance records, which is very rare, right? If you can get one, because if you're getting a repo... Chances are, it's, well, not ch not usually. You there are the odd occasions where you can get it from the dealer, but uh, most repos are coming out of the auctions, right? So it, yeah, steers and queers, and you don't look like no steer. Um, so if you're gonna get a repo, if you can get the maintenance records with it, and it's a sure thing, then yeah, absolutely, because you can pull you can pull like this truck right now is a 2020. And it has 550,000 miles on it. You know, a year ago, this truck was worth 90 grand. Right now, you can pull this truck out of the auction for 35, uh, well, American dollars. You can pull it out of the auction right now for 35, 40 grand, right? That's just the way it is right now. Um, so can you get a good deal on repos or on, on out of the auction? Absolutely. But there's going to be that element of... Uh, there's going to be that element of, of risk you're going to take. It's going to be a bit of a gamble. And the truck is full of fuel also. This one is repo by Kenworth Finance, so that's why it the dealer. Well, then chances are that you're going to be all right, right, if it was, if it was Kenworth Finance. 
I like the fact that it was full of fuel. That's a bonus. Believe me, when I sell my trucks, there's nothing in them. Every time I've sold a truck to flip it over, the fuel tanks are empty, baby. You're not getting free fuel. Shades of Full Metal Jacket, the movie. Ah, uh, exactly, eh? Where are you from? Texas, sir. Texas? My God. <laughs> Only steers and queers come from Texas, and you don't look like no steer. Love that, love that movie. I got uh, I got a repo as well. Ran the VIN through uh, Vision Trucks. Got the maintenance record. Still got manufacturer's engine warranty, tranny after treatment, towing, full of fuel as well. Sorry, you know, at 15, I don't think you didn't put the year. And maybe you did. I I did. I missed it. What year is it? What year is it? Because if it's got the warranty on it, if it's still got the manufacturer's warranty on it. Um, it's a 21. Dude, you know what? I'll be honest with you. Um, pay the pay the nine grand and get the extended. Right? Because you can, if you, did you, if you bought it through the dealer, right? If you bought it through the dealer, um, pay the, pay the nine grand and get the extended. It's, it's so worth it on those trucks. It's so worth it. One check engine light can cost you more than 9,000 bucks. Trust me, pay the nine grand to get the extended warranty on that. Because I can tell you right now, if it's a 21 and you've got manufacturer's warranty on the engine, tranny, and after treatment, you're, you're probably going to be running out of that warranty shortly as a 21. Because mine's a 20 and I ran out of my warranty and I had the extended and I ran out of my warranty about three months ago. So I'd get the extended to put on that. Volvo or Volvo or Mac or wherever you bought it from whatever dealership, um, they'll they'll do it. They'll do it. Valid through November 2025. Is it unlimited miles? So it's done by year instead of miles. Some of the warranties have changed over the years. I I, I don't uh, I don't know. I I could be talking out of my ass here. Um, I'm just going by like the warranties I've had on this. Like I've, I've, I had the full warranty on manufacturer and extended warranty on this. I had the full warranty and extended warranty on the Volvo. I bought that brand new. Uh, the W9 obviously had no no warranty on that. It was a 97. But uh, any of the trucks I've ever bought new, I've always, always had warranty and extended warranty on it. To 800,000 miles. So they upped it. Yeah. It used to be 600,000. And if it's a Volvo. Now I don't know if Mac carried that over. But if it's a Volvo. They have 1.2 million. On the on the iShift. That's the manufacturer. That's not extended. Right. Volvo has 1.2 million. On the on the iShift. Warranty on the iShift. That's, uh, that's how sure of themselves they are with that thing. What's going on Nick Earl? Well, Nick, they do. They they go by mileage or by years, whichever comes first. They'll put three years, five hundred thousand miles. So if you you know if you hit the three year and you're only at four hundred thousand, well you're out of warranty. Or if you if you're at two and a half years and you hit five hundred thousand, well you're out of warranty. Whichever one you hit first. Truck's only got 550,000 kilometers on it. So what's that, like 320,000 miles? Wow, for a 21? That one, that, they didn't run that one hard, did they? The I-Shift is so nice. Well, you've got, the, well, in, in the Mac, it's called the M, what's called the M-Drive, isn't it? It's the same thing. You've got the, you've got an I-Shift, right? You've got an I-Shift. If that, if it's a 21 Mac, and you've got an eye shift in that. They just call it the M drive. Just like the MP8 engine is a, DD, a, a DD13. It's a Volvo DD13 engine. They have just changed a couple of things. Like the coolant reservoir used to be at the front. I think it's now back on the on the on the back, up against the up against the the front of the cab, where the dash is. And they moved a couple other things around. But and essentially, the block of an MP8 is the DD13. Injectors are the same. Cups are the same. All the wiring harnesses, a lot of that shit is all the same. Yeah, no kidding, eh, Mr. Beast? I think he just jinxed himself. You better get the uh, you better get the extended warranty, or the truck's not going to make it to 2025. 
And the ice, the ice shifts are so. Nick, I agree. I agree. Every Volvo I've ever driven with the ice shift, man, there is not a smoother transmission in the world than those ice shifts. They are spectacular. They really are. Imagine full of fuel plus get the load from Quebec to orientation. So just will be make many money the first trip. Mine have warranty until December 2029, full cover, and I will not pay oil changes until 2027. That's a sweet deal. That's a sweet deal. Was part of the package when the guy buy the truck. I don't understand how they lost the truck. And the color, yeah. The, that extended warranty and the oil change into it must be very expensive. I was very lucky and have uh, Thermo King APU, zero idle. That's the important thing with the new trucks, eh? With these new trucks, zero idle. Zero idle. Like this this thing here, you know, as soon as I pulled in here, I did this, I did that. I, I gave the engine maybe 30 seconds and turn it off, man. You don't need to cool. The, the, this, ain't a, this ain't a 60 series. This ain't a 3406 cat. You know, it's not an N14. You don't have to idle these things for 20 minutes to let the and turbo cool down. Let the end. You don't have to do that anymore. These engines are designed. Shut it off the minute you get it. The minute you get it parked. I give it 30 seconds, but you're okay with a minute. To, you know, minute or two. This truck has such low idle time on it. It's ridiculous, because I refuse to idle it. I'm so goddamn cheap. I don't run my bunk heater unless it gets below 30 degrees. Right. When it gets freezing outside, I've got blankets like look at my bed. Right. I've got two comforters, a horse blanket, the wheel burner blanket, plus actually two horse blankets. So two comforters, two horse blankets and a wheel burner blanket. Man, it can be minus fucking 20 outside. And as long as I'm in the bed, I'm good. I don't need my bunk heater. And that's how cheap I am. I refuse to actually spend a, it, it, my 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 uh, S bar bunk heater. This thing drinks one gallon of fuel for ten hours, right? So for ten hours, it drinks one gallon of fuel, and I'm so cheap, I won't spend a gallon of fuel. I refuse to spend it. If I don't have to, I don't. I don't. Summertime's a little different, but you're not burning fuel with the with the with the EPU, right? With the battery operated packs. So all you're doing is using battery battery juice with, with your air conditioner. But in the wintertime, no, no. Same thing with these new trucks with the starting, right? When you, when you start these trucks, right? When you start these trucks in, in, in the morning, if they're cold, even if it's a dead cold, like I don't have to worry about it because if my bunk heater is running, I've got the engine heater as well. So my engine is always warm. But if, like, for example, this morning, I didn't run my bunk heater last night. So my engine was, was like, ambient temperature outside. And um, so I didn't, you know, it was just, but I don't, I don't let the, I don't turn the truck on, go get my coffee, do this. Do, I don't let my truck warm up for 25 minutes, right? A lot of people do. A lot of people let their, they all oh, got to get the, you know, I got to get the truck up to 150 degrees. No, you don't. These new trucks are not designed for that anymore. It's not, again, it's not like you had a 60 series Detroit where you got to get them up to temperature before you start driving them. No, you do not need to do that. These new trucks are built. My, 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 my uh, uh, instruction manual, or my, I've got all the manuals for this truck as well. Seven minutes is what it says. Seven minutes is all you need to start this. You you can do you you can start your pre-trip before you start your engine for Christ's sake because your pre-trip is supposed to be 15 minutes, right? So yeah, you can you can start your truck, and t 10 minutes, 10 minutes you're good to drive. You don't have to worry about it. Matrix is back. Okay, Olivia is back. Good to see you, Olivia. Weren't you here yesterday? You were here yesterday, weren't you? Good to see you. Who's that sneaky little bastard that came in below Olivia there? Buck, uh, Buck, Brown, Brown, Browner, Brownie, Brownstone, Brown Town, Buck Pound Town, Pound Town. That's what it says. Buck, Buck, Buck went to Pound Town. Don't hate me because I'm loaded now. <laughs> well, guess what? I'm not loaded. I'm not loaded. I'm sitting here empty and I'll be sitting here. I'll be sitting here empty for another 20 hours, 20, 
what is it? What time is it? 11. Yeah, another 24, 25, 26 hours I'll be sitting here empty. It's not uh, about Thermo King, be cheap, Brian. It's about intelligent and saving money on fuel. No, I, I agree. I agree. I can, I can afford to burn one gallon of fuel at night to keep warm if I want to. I can afford the five bucks or four bucks, whatever the gallon of fuel cost. I choose not to. Because if you take that $4 and you add that up over a week of five nights, that's 20 bucks. Well, 20 bucks, multiply that times four, like in a month, right? That's 80 bucks. Or sorry, that's, uh, yeah, 20, yeah, it's 80 bucks, right? So you take 80 bucks, multiply that times 12. Hey, it adds up over a year. I'm cheap. I don't want to spend it. Exactly. See, you did the math. One gallon per day in 300 days work per year. You save like a thousand bucks. Well, I work more than 300 days. I don't I don't get 65 days off a year, but still your your math is correct. Your um, your math is right. Me, I don't do that. On my peat, uh, on my peat, I have to keep the engine warm. Well, I don't have to worry about the engine being warm on this. My engine, I, I've got the built-in heater. So when I've got the bunk heater going, the engine, I wake up in the morning and my engine's already at 150 degrees when I start my truck. And it's nice. It's nice. It, it, it's minus fucking. When I, when I had this, I had this truck up on the ice road and I was the only guy on the ice road that was able to turn my truck off every night. Believe it or not, even at minus 40, minus 50, I was able to turn this truck off and the bunk. Now, my, my engine wasn't at 150 degrees. It might have been about, a, about 115, 120, but it was still warm enough that I could start it, no problem. And it was, it was happy at minus 40 or minus 50. Sorry, I got some weird funky shit. There's a guy coming in to pick up like one of the dumpsters and he's trying to jack it or crane it onto the back of his truck, however they do that. And it looks like he's got one arm on the side there that's failing and he, he can't get it on straight. I'd like to help him, but that's way out of my uh, way out of my class, way out of my league. And there go the alarms. Do I want to know what alarms are going off in South Africa? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? If your alarm, if an alarm's going off anywhere, it's probably a bad thing. I would think, most of the time. Most of the time. I think this one's done. Nope. Mm-mm. Got a few, got a little bit of life left in her yet. I will smoke these right down to the nub. I just can't help myself. Your dog's yapping. Well, that's like our house. My dog's yapping. If the wind blows and it, whatever, the, the fucking both dogs. Usually the little dog starts yapping and then the big dog doesn't know what the little one's yapping, but figures I better start barking too. So the big one starts. So the little one starts. Uh, the little one starts and then the big one follows right after. Then you look outside and there's nothing there, right? Just yapping at air. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what mine are doing. That's exactly what mine do. Drives Darlene crazy. But it's scared. It'll scare the shit out of you because you're sitting on the couch, right? Say you're just sitting on the couch having your morning coffee or whatever, reading a book or something, and all of a sudden the dogs go off, right? And it scares the living crap right out of you. At least it does me. It just startles you. If you're not awake, believe me, you will be after that. No, oh, she gone. She gone. So, boys, I think we're going to finish the banana. This is the this is the point of the wedding where the, the preacher goes, if anybody, for any reason. So, this is the part of the live where I do that. Sick bastard, what's going on, boy? 
we are uh, we are parked for the day. Uh, yeah, good morning. We are parked for the day. Eating bananas. But uh, right on, eh, Buck? I love that name, sick bastard. Like, first of all, I don't even know how you got away with it on YouTube, which is good that you did. I'm so glad. But awesome name. Love it. But I'm just about out of shit to talk about. The brain is dry and the mouth is... is mm, the mouth is still wanting to run, but there's nothing to talk about. I'm glad you're done. Dude, no. I only got, I only did one run today. Uh, the second the second load canceled so i've been i've been i've been parked for a few hours now it sucks balls man so i i lost half a day's work today you've met the sick bastard have you now tell us the truth buck is he really a sick fucking bastard or what he probably is does he does he walk around with little ki with little kitty cat tails that he's chopped off the cats and on his belt buckles and and wear that? Most recently, last month. Hey, you know what, bastard? It's trucking, dude. It's trucking. Shit happens. Uh, the load canceled, not because the load canceled. The, there was no load, um, because the at the rail yard where I get loaded, they weren't able to make the switch. The, the the rail lines they couldn't switch out and get the get the ingots in, into our part of the yard so you know it's, it was out of our hands there was nothing uh there was nothing you could do about it there's nothing i could do about it our office there's nothing anybody could do about it it was cn rail's responsibility and they dropped the ball and so there's no use jumping up and down or losing your shit or getting pissed off there's nothing you can do about it so all right i got you know, I got a, I got a pretty much a full day off because I don't have to go back to work till one o'clock tomorrow morning. So what are you going to do on a good note, on a good note, Dar's coming up. She's uh, just getting herself out of the shower and everything. So she's going to come up and meet me for lunch and we're going to go out and have a little afternoon date. So that's a bonus. I'll, 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 you know what, I'll take, I'll take lunch and spending a few hours with my wife in the middle of the week. I'll take that over and over, over money or an extra load any day of the week. So. He's definitely our kind of people. I'll take your word for it, Buck. I trust. I, tr I trust your. Uh, I trust your intuition. I trust your judge of people and character. Uh, only because you are my type of people and character. So, and I trust me. So I trust you. How much longer is your contract, Ryan? The contract is open-ended. It's one of those that, uh, when the demand down in New York uh, dries up and they, they need it to slow down, then the contract is over. So. Um, like I said earlier, I said I was talking with uh, ownership here a couple of days ago, and he indicated that the contract, uh, this could go right up until the end of the year, um, which is good, right? Um, but when it does, when it dries up, I'm in, I'm in, it's no big deal for me. I just go back out on the open board, just like, like I was before I was doing this. Um, this is, to me, this is obviously uh, going from here down to New York, like Oswego, dropping my load, coming back and doing that twice a day. Is it boring? Yeah, it's boring, right? Come on, I can, I, I can do it half asleep. I don't even need to be awake to do it anymore. But because it's heavy haul and because it's uh, other, a couple other things uh, it make it, that make it financially um, attractive, it makes it very financially attractive for me to do it. So um, I make more like I work, I work Monday to Friday here. So I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I've already made more than I make in a full week running on the road, on the open board by Wednesday. So I'm, I'm very good with that. I got no problem with that. I like, uh, I like that very much. I don't know about you, but I'm good with that. I, you know what, Ryan, if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to, um, I could take a week off of this. Um, there was a, a, a couple of weeks ago, actually about a month ago, where something had happened and they had a, a mechanical failure down at the plant. So the plant was closed for a couple of days. So I took a load out to Iowa, 
right? I can, and if I wanted to, I could go in there right now and say, look at, um, you know, next week, uh, I want to come off the ingots for a week. I need a break, and uh, you know, give me give me an Iowa or a Wisconsin or where we we run the, the the Midwest out there, so it's all like Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Nebraska, that type of shit out there. So, and it's usually uh, cable, like big big air. It's, that's what I'd be taking out if I go right. We take we're we're probably the main carrier for all of the utility companies out in Iowa and Wisconsin. So we care we take a lot of that stuff out there. So if I really wanted to, I could I could take a I could take a week off of this and go. Times you sit there and go, I'll take I'll take money over boredom, right? I'll pay I'll I'll get paid to be bored. But when the when this runs out, I'll be back to doing IOs. Actually, I might actually uh, when this dries up, I might go back on vans, right? I might just go back on vans. I don't necessarily need to do flatbed. I'm I'm back on flatbed now after a two year break uh, to give my back and my body a break. But um, I might just go back on vans and van work. I don't need to do flatbeds. So uh, this company here, it's really weird. Um, any other company I've ever worked for, you know, it's a different pay rate. If you if you work vans, you make X amount per mile. If you make, work flatbed, you make significantly more per mile. The this place here, it doesn't matter what you're pulling, vans or 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 flatbeds, it's the same mileage rate. So I'd rather pull the van and get better fuel mileage, and do and be honestly do less work, right? Give my give my why why work my back and my and take a chance of hurting myself if I don't have to. So I don't. I just I prefer to do vans. Um, but for what I'm doing here, yeah, it hurts. You know, it, it hurts doing the doing these loads. You know, yesterday I, I offloaded, I I loaded and offloaded three times. That means so three times I was you know yanking and pulling straps and everything like that. Um, did it hurt? Yeah. Did my body hurt? Yeah. But the way I'm looking at it is it's not going to be an extended period of time. So I'll take short term pain for long term gain, and that's the only reason I look at it that way. So. Anywho, ladies and joints, I'm uh, I'm gonna bugger off. I might actually go throw myself into the shower and run around and let some water hit me and, and get clean, uh, so that when my lady gets up here, I don't smell like a rail yard. So uh, you know what? I'm gonna do that, and uh, you guys have uh, a good day. If you got a good, if you got a beautiful day like me, enjoy it. Hope you guys uh, have a good one. Mr. B's, thank you. Matrix, thank you. Talk to you guys later. Uh, we'll see you. Uh, as far as I know, the switch the switch did get done. So as far as I know, we're back to business as usual tomorrow. So we'll see everybody tomorrow, and we'll do our two turns tomorrow, and uh, we'll have a we'll have a little bit longer of a driving life tomorrow. So, alrighty. With that, man, you guys, I'm out of here.